We are three weeks into the college football season, but for Michigan State and Iowa, this is what counts. The start of the Big Ten season. A sellout crowd here in Spartan Stadium. Our weather conditions in East Lansing. We have a temperature of 53 degrees and a forecast of light rain. It rained hard here this morning. In fact, it has rained throughout the last three weeks. As most of you are aware, the Midwest has been hit by torrential rains, but it stopped here 45 minutes ago. And we will begin this game without rain. George Murphy has the ball feed up, and he will kick it off with James Moore and Frank Johnson, 28, set to receive for the Spartans. Round ball over all the belly. Johnson hammered down at the 25 yard line. Well, let's take a look at this offense that'll be coming up now, led by Dave Urema, perhaps an underrated quarterback, coach. And split end Andre Risen, great hands and outstanding speed. Mark Ingram, we watched him burn the Irish a couple weeks ago. And tight end Mike Sargent, Sargent, strongest man on the team. Joe Pugh replaces the injured Bobby Morris at fullback. And Lorenzo White to help his cause for the Heisman with a big game today. Pugh is set in front. The tight end in motion. Yurima throws on first down. And it is complete to Pew coming out of the backfield. He gets to the 28-yard line with linebacker George Davis bringing him down. Number 38, Joseph Pew, tackled by 37. The offensive line era. Tony Mandarich last year was named the Football News Freshman All-American. Now next to him is Doug Rogers, 6'3", 260 from Ohio. And center, Pat Shermer, best defensive lineman on the team. Vince, the offensive lineman. Vince center. Tatum moves to the starting lineup. At the 28. And David Uhl is the other tackle on the right side. This is second down for the Spartans. Rima to put it up twice in a row, complete. Wide open. On the near side was Mark Ingram. Shades of another Dame game, Brent. Same thing, Ingram goes right straight down the field, runs an out pattern. You'll see it from the end zone here. Big run action to Lorenzo White. Ingram reads the secondary and moves up to the inside. This is the same play that they burned Notre Dame two weeks ago. Arrow, that's a 17-yard game and a first down for the Spartans on their own 45. First down. Arima checks that Hawkeye defense as he comes to the line. He has not been bashful. And the Hawkeyes have to be wondering, where is Lorenzo White? Here he comes. On the toss, the alley was open. And the Heisman Trophy candidate gets into Hawkeye territory before Ken Sims battles him down. You see this from the end zone. Watch the good blocking. The fullback, Pugh, goes in motion. The lead block. He gets some good blocks. Look at Lorenzo pick the daylight right there. Excellent job. Mike Sargent, a tight end, threw one of the great blocks. Jeff Dross, the All-American, was pushed back off the line of scrimmage and could not get any leverage. Brent, he was held there, I think. Number 74, Mike Poole, had a hold of his leg. First Special umpire didn't get it. Ball is at the Iowa 45. Sprint draw. And they come with White. That's the play that killed the Hawkeyes in Iowa City last year. Dave Hake. The nose guard, 64, led the defense. All right, let's meet this defense now for the Hawkeyes. Joe Mott started two games in 85 and won the starting role this year. Here's the All-American candidate, Jeff Drost. And at middle guard, Dave Haight got a big job replacing Hap Peterson. John Brees played a lot for the Hawks last year. And Bruce Gear, this poor guy got hurt on the first play of the 1985 year and missed six games, but he's back. This is second and nine. Again, the tight end in motion. They roll in that direction. The Ingram incomplete interference. Keaton Smiley reached around, and the penalty flag is thrown at number 44. If he, if he, it looked pretty good up here. It didn't look like interference, but let's take another look. He singles coverage on him. Keith Smiley right there. Keaton Smiley. Let's see if his right hand or left hand gets on him. Ingram turns back to the outside. Let's see. Uh, he's making contact with him before the ball gets there. Yeah, such a good call. Made contact before the ball got there. It's a young secondary for Hayden Fry in his eighth year at Iowa, and one that he has a lot of question marks about. 
because this is the first big time opponent that they have looked at. Dave Urema, one of the better passers in the country. Perhaps an underrated quarterback as we watch him lead the Spartans to what George Perlis hopes will be an eventual offensive to Rose Bowl. George Perlis, after this game, must get the Spartans ready for Bo Schimbeckler and the Wolverines. That will be next Saturday on CBS. In four years, Perlis has restored the football fortunes of the Spartans, who has moved inside the Iowa 30-yard line. It is a first and 10 at the 29, double tight end formation. They bring Sargent in motion. That toss to Lorenzo White, and he got three yards before the hole even began to close, and linebacker Dan Worth, 46, led the defensive charge. One of the plays they put in, Brent, uh, to beat this Iowa defense, they trapped with the tight end coming in motion on the nose man, Hayden. They got a partial block in there, but Worth stepped in there and did a good job on him. Dan's cohort at linebacker is a good one, George Davis. Started last year eight, next to All America, Larry Station has graduated. Arima throwing deep for Ingram. Touchdown, Michigan State. Lorenzo, not a great one, but there's the throw, a perfect throw by Urema, and there is Ingram that has split the seam. A perfect throw. Look at him lay that ball in there. He only had one step to get it, to keep it from being out of bounds. So when we come back, the Spartans will be kicking off. They lead it by seven. For every man who wears brute deodorant, there's a woman who'll be glad he did. Because a man who wears brute deodorant is nice to be close to. And nobody knows that better than a woman. Only brute deodorant gives you long-lasting protection with the great smell of brute. Brute deodorant, cologne, and everything else. Brute. It smells like a man. Great. Night training. It never stops for Mr. Goodrange. Cars change, he changes. He picks from over 100 General Motors service schools to stay on the leading edge of service technology. He keeps up with fuel injection, turbocharger changes, new electronics, transaxle advances, you name it. He's trained to be good. He's trained to stay good. Mr. Goodrange, no one knows your GM car better. No one. Tomorrow, Herschel Walker and the Cowboys are going to taste Denver's deadly orange crush. Double header action starts with the NFL Today on CBS Sports. Era, where was the breakdown in the secondary? Right here, Kerry Burke, number three, is a deep safety. Smiley is here. Ingram runs and splits the difference. Burke should have been back, but Ingram got past him. Let's take a look at it. Terry Burt, right as Ingram turns up field, makes that fatal step towards Ingram. By now, Ingram, who's a 4-5 man, runs by him. The ball is dropped in beautifully by Urema, and it is a perfect touchdown pass. The Spartans score on their first possession, and Ingram's second touchdown pass thrown by Urema. Two weeks ago, Urema hit Notre Dame with a 40-yarder to Ingram. 
Here he comes back with a 27-yard scoring strike as the Spartans open the Big Ten season with a touchdown two, against Robert the Hawkeyes. Smith, the number three, Kerry Montgomery tees the ball up. Kicking off for Michigan. And deep, it'll be Kerry first, who was burned, and Robert Smith. Rick Montgomery. Bird is toward the right-hand side, number three. when you know that 11 men are coming down on you. Now, Tom Paholsky draws the first series for Hayden Fry. He fully expects to be using two or three quarterbacks. He doesn't want the big freshman under fire right away in this game. Paholsky's father was a major league pitcher with the Cardinals and the Cubs. He hands off on first down, and Bayless comes behind the left side of the offensive line. Dean Altavelli takes him down. Altavelli. Nice little delayed draw, beautifully executed here. You see Bayless, look at that nice opening in there. We get a great block from number 74, Chris Gamble, that comes up to lead the play. Tom Paholsky from St. Louis, Missouri, played high school football at Kirkwood High. He is 6'4", 205. He holds on extra points for the Hawkeyes, and he has thrown for two two-pointers already this year. Let's take a look at the rest of this Iowa offense. Who's behind him, Eric? Well, Jim Morrow had split in with a walk-on, led in yards per catch last year. The speed in Robert Smith. And Mike Flagg, a great tight end. Two touchdown passes against Michigan State last year. Well, Richard well, Bass draws a start at fullback. And Rick Bayless, the walk-on surprise, average of 9.6 per carry. A very tight-looking eye formation. Not much daylight. Era, that formation looked too tight up behind the quarterback in the offensive line that time. It looked to me like Bayless and Bass were jammed up there behind Bolski. Perhaps I'm so accustomed to seeing White stand so deep. Did you see that? You're absolutely right, Brent. I don't know why, whether they were trying to sneak through there very quickly, but they were abnormally close for the eye formation, both the fullback and the eye back. Watch them as they come up this time. Now it's a split back, and look how tight they are. Second and nine, he'll try to get Bayless outside. Down at the 20-yard line against this tough Michigan State defense, Mark Nichols. Well, let the charge. Now here's the offensive line, and remember this is one that Hayden likes very much. He's a great one, a preseason All-American. They crossed him there. Chris Gamble next to him, 6'7". And at center, Mike Mark Sindlinger, three-year starter there, a great one. Bob Cratch is the right guard next to Sindlinger. He's 6'4". And Herb Wester, 6'8", 285. the biggest offensive lineman. Well, this is a third and a long five. It's a flag who may be short, and it will depend on where they spot it. Kurt Larson, number three, hit flag. I think he spotted it, so they're going to get it. It is going to be close, as you said, Brent. Now they got it. They said that his forward motion was stopped after he had passed the first down marker. You know, what you do is a lot of stunning in here by the Michigan State team, and it may be the, why, the reason that the, of course, here's the pass completion of the flag, who is really a great athlete, number 86. But they may be cheating those backs up to try to neutralize the stunts and games that Michigan State does their tricks with their guards and tackles and outside backers. Maholsky's rolling toward Robert Smith's side, throws underneath, complete. Maholsky's pass, complete. Bayless coming out of the backfield. Tackled by John Miller. John Miller, number 44. This was last night, and that's a shocker. That's a surprise, isn't it? At BYU, Air Force with a new quarterback running its wishbone wins. 
And on Thursday night, Tulsa was a 10-point winner. Penn State easily, I'm surprised. I thought Rutgers might play them close. Oklahoma to come back after that disappointment last Saturday. And Auburn's for real, aren't they? Of all the scores on the Prudential College Football Report. Inside power with Bayless this time. I'm sorry, let's check that. That was Richard Bass, the fullback, 23, getting his first carry. Bass is replacing David Hudson. How much will the Hawkeyes miss Hudson here this afternoon, Eric? Hudson's out of this football game. He's not going to play. He didn't even make the trip to the... Uh, for the team yesterday, Hayden Fry's really got a serious problem without the quarterback, the starting quarterback and fullback are out. A whole speak, quarterbacking the Hawkeyes on the opening series. Straight drop and under pressure. Drops it off to Bayless. And Bayless gets the first down before John Miller brings him down. So Iowa with a ball control attack here behind Paholski. And Paholski is showing a lot of poise in here for a starting assignment like he has. You see here a ground level view of it. He steps back, drops straight back, as Long did a year ago. Feels pressure from the inside by Larson, number three. And he dumps the ball off and they get another first down. They're picking away at it. Craig Clark. First down. Checks in at tight end. Look how they stand their tight end up. Hayden Fry has always done that. Bayless can't follow it. Michigan State recovers. Joe Bergen recovers the fumble for George Perlis. Oh, moving the ball very effectively. Kicking out first downs. But that fumble is going to put a lot of pressure on this Iowa team. Here's another look at it. He shakes right there. It's Larson, number three, that shakes that ball loose. And Joe Bergen was right there to recover the fumble and give the Spartans a scoring opportunity at the Iowa 40 on the yard line. Aiden Fry confirmed with Baholski on the sideline. Aiden told us he fully expects to use three quarterbacks here this afternoon with Vlasic injured. Chuck Hartley could see some action. And the young man everyone is waiting to see, Dan McGuire, the freshman. The Spartan football season by ordering your 86 Hayden Fry scheduled three non-conference opponents whom he felt would not be that difficult because he told us a year ago, I'd like to be healthy for the Big Ten season. It is ironic that the Hawkeyes suffered several key injuries in last Saturday's route. They scored every time they touched the ball in the first half. They have moved up in class, and it shows already. First and ten at the Hawkeye, 41 for Urena. Ingram in motion. The toss to White. He's cut off at the 40-yard line by Joe Mott. Joe Mott did a good job of going right down the line, warding off the block. You got a guy like Lorenzo White one-on-one. -on -one. You don't want that very often, but Mott did an excellent job. It is 7-0, the Hawkeyes trail. Conferring with the defensive assistant on the far side. Ball of the Iowa 40, second. Michigan State ripping off large chunks of yardage this Saturday. Yurima going low for rise and it's intercepted. It was Smiley. And Smiley gets to the 24. Mark Ingram tackles him. Yurima made a mistake. He threw that one up for Greg. He really did. He was getting a lot of pressure though, Brent. He had two Iowa rushers coming on him. Let's watch it from the end zone to see the kind of pressure he gets. He decides to go ahead and unload it. Hate right now at number 64, and I can't see quite the other number. But he underthrows the ball. Great job by Smiley, who gets the interception. This is a big, big play for Iowa to take him out of trouble here after that turnover by Bayless. And, of course, Smiley is a real flyer. He can run about 4.45 in the 40. The Iowa's ball for the second time when you come back. Unfortunately, that's the weather picture for tonight. Roger is a weatherman. He knows the difference between little storms and big storms. And recently, when he saw a big one coming, the first place he went...
was his Honda generator dealer. Hey, you're the weatherman. I need a real good generator. And by the time the storm hit, Roger was prepared. The Honda generator, because you never know what the weather will bring. They say there is no way to wrap chicken so it won't leak. Can't be done. Too complicated. That's the way it goes. But Goodyear said, clean up your act. And found a way to print an adhesive in just the right spot on the plastic wrap to seal it properly and easily and leak-proof it completely. See what you can do when you don't give a rap about what they say? Goodyear. If you want to risk driving on your old antifreeze another year, you ought to know what you might be getting yourself into. Driving just 10,000 miles on weak, neglected antifreeze can cause freeze-up and make a radiator look this bad, while a Presto radiator looks this good. So for maximum protection, don't push your luck. Change it once a year, every year, with fresh Presto. And don't you be left out in the cold. Arrow, one worked for a touchdown and one didn't. What's the difference? Well, Yurima got an awful lot of pressure and underthrew the ball. You see right here, the, the guy that actually intercepts the ball is beaten by Ingram on the inside. If Yurima gets him the ball, they're going to get another score, but it's underthrown. And Ryzen comes back, but Smiley steps in and inter intercepts it. But the pressure that Yurima got, I think, was the reason the ball was thrown the way it was. Number 18, Pro, with the safety on double coverage rather than Burt. Mahoski on the toss to Bayless, and Bayless trying to get outside. Dean Altabelli, number 13 and 39, Paul Bobbitt. So let's take a look at this defense. Now, here's the young man who already has recovered a fumble for Michigan State, Joe Bergen. Mark Nichols led the assault on the twist and helped knock the ball free in there. Next to him is David Wolfe. He's been a steady performer. And the other man on the defensive line is who, Era? John Buddy comes from a great football family. Gain of three. Second and seven from the 27. Second and seven. The ball is at the 27. Iowa trails Michigan State by seven points. Maholski to the left. And he is brought down by Joe Bergen. Bergen did a nice job that time. Well, Penetrated Steve deep. He stepped Bergen, in there for Shemansky uh, the last week and played so well that he started this ball game. Let's take a look at the linebackers because Michigan State uses a 4-3 era. Tim Moore, great outside, strong linebacker. Good speed. Shane Bulla, leading tackler on this football team a year ago and again this year. And, of course, Kurt Larson, we've seen him in action here a number of times this afternoon already. It is third and seven, so five defensive backs. The nickel up against Paholski, and it is complete. That ball was to Mark Mazzari. A first down on a 29-yard completion from Paholski to Mazzari. Great job of running the routes. They split the zones beautifully. You see there with the two wideouts, Mazzari is the inside man right there. Rowe did not stay with him, number 18. And he gets right in the scene between the linebackers and the deep secondary, and a good throw in there by Paholsky. It'll be a first down for the Hawkeyes at the Michigan State 44. 552 to go in the first quarter. Michigan State leading Iowa 7 to nothing. Looked like Paholsky was going to pitch, and then he comes back and drops it off the bat. Joe Bergen, who's been very active, came back to make the tackle, but there is a penalty marker down. Late hit came in there and speared him after the ball was down. It's going to be a personal foul against Spartans. And a costly one. Here's a two. It really is. It stopped the play well. It was unnecessary. That's the kind of thing that drives George Perlis crazy. Well, let's see if this isn't number 83, Nichols, who comes in here a little bit late. You bet it is. No doubt about that. That is a foul and a penalty First marked off. And the and ball will be put down to the 26-yard line. First down for the Hawkeyes as Clark replaces flag at tight end. And he delivers the play to Paholski. First down by penalty. While at the Michigan State, 26. Missouri and Smith go to the left side. So
so far, Paholski is five of five. This is Bayless. Kurt Larson making the stop. Baylor's Gary. Era that secondary of Michigan State. Kurt Larson. Here is John, John Miller Bunny. at one corner. How about the rest of Michigan State? They've played, they played exceptionally well together. Dean Altabelli, a very fine student as well as a football player at strong safety. Paul Bobbitt played free, uh, strong safety last year, now playing the other side. And Todd Crum, who had two interceptions against Notre Dame, one for a touchdown. Second and seven for the Hawks. This time he hits Bayless out of the backfield for a first down close to the 10-yard line. Todd Crum, number 35, finally brought him down. But the Hawkeyes are on the move. First down, Iowa. There you see the open, open formation. Bayless is your left halfback right here. We'll break right into the flat. He drives off, and it's wide open. There it is right there. They, they allowed the weak side flat to be open, and Crum came off of it to make the play, but not until they made a first down. First down. And again, this time, Bayless slips up, countering back to the right side. Dave Wolf, 56, was there, and that's probably Bayless the easiest down. tackle he'll ever receive credit for. Well, yeah, it, I think the field had a little something to do with that. His feet just came right out from under him. I think he would have probably picked up three or four yards on it, Brent. There was a pretty good hole there. It's one of the few times I think you'll see the youngster slip on an artificial surface because it's even greater traction when it's just barely wet as it is. Errol, what's Iowa trying to accomplish with the fake in one direction and coming back like that? They're trying to hold Shane Bull of the middle linebacker, get him going the wrong direction because he's always somewhere around the flight. There's a the draw. And the fullback broke a tackle and got in for the Hawkeyes. Touchdown! What a spectacular run by Richard Bass. Mark Nichols missed the tackle in the backfield, number 83. And then a great run by Bass. 12-yard touchdown burst. And the Hawkeyes jump right back into this one here in the first quarter. left side of your screen will pull and lead this play it's a little misdirection number 83 Nichols has him dead to rights for about a two or three yard loss right there and he makes Bass makes a miss turns up the field another missed tackle look at that what running that is by Bass the last six yards on sheer desire and effort so far they don't miss Hudson or Vlasic on that drive Who says you can't have old world taste and a new world waste? Old world aging and the new world youthful spirit. Europe's finest hops in America's finest light beer. Make a load light, old world quality from Anheuser-Busch. Make a load light, the best of both worlds. Make a load light, oh yes you can have it all. A ranger never takes the easy way out. You're reaching deep inside you for things you've never known. Go! That's why getting into the rangers is tough and the training is tough. Be all that you can be. So it makes me feel like I'm part of something really special. Be all that you can be. And I'm not the only I'll one. Find your future in the army. Tonight, I'm the absolute last person you ever want to mess with. A thirst for revenge lands Michael Nuri in the middle of a vicious gang war. Downtown on CBS. Version by Outland. 
Errol, what about Coach Fry's game plan? He has used an awful lot of tight ends. We have three of them on the field right now. Then he pulls his guard to get through the hole, too. What about that? Well, they're doing a good job of putting pressure on the defensive secondary of Michigan State. But yet on this particular play, it is errors on the part of tackling. There's one tackle by Nichols that is missed. Here's another tackle. There's two more right there, but let's give credit to Bass for the running. But I'll tell you this, if you're looking at it from the defensive side, if you're coaching the defense, that's lousy tackling. And if you're looking at it from the offensive side, oh, what a great job of running that was by my running back, from a fullback. <laughs> and Bass celebrates. Number for the six. time being, he you're is number, number one. Three. In the hearts and minds of Hawkeye fans three, who have become some money. of the most loyal football Rick fans Johnson. in America. And Hayden Fry rebuilds the program. And make no mistake, it is a program now like Nebraska, Oklahoma, Michigan, Penn State. Well, he's done a great job at Iowa. You go back to 78 and 79 when he first came, and the job that he has done there is really remarkable. Murphy to kick it off again. Keeping it low on the ground. Oh, great kickoff. Fielded by Moore inside the five. Bumble. Iowa's ball on the fumble. Look at George Perlis. If you don't, you know how he feels in this kind of a situation. You've just been scored on. Your opponent has now recovered the ball at the six-yard line. It was a perfect squib type kick, tough to handle. First down, Iowa. Let's take a look at that kick. It is Murphy for the second time keeping it low. There it is, just kind of bobbling around. Now it goes down to the inside. Let's see, Altabelli Alt 13, though he doesn't get it. Let's see what happens here on this fumble. Is it, oh, look at that contact in there. Number 22, I think it is. It does the job there. It's Sistrunk. Yes, indeed. That's Otis Sistrunk's nephew who tore him loose from the ball. A whole speed to throw on first down. Touchdown. in Mike Flagg, a six-yard reception for the score. The kicking game, so critical. A week ago in the Orange Bowl here on CBS, we watched the Sooners of Oklahoma have difficulty returning kickoffs from the end zone against Miami. And now this afternoon, on a low squib-type kick by Murphy, Michigan State fouls it up. And the resulting fumble sets up the go-ahead touchdown. And Outland to attempt his second extra point in a matter of seconds. It is 14-7. Well, I'll tell you, Mike Flagg, the tight end, is a real load to bring down. 6'6 six, six and 240. Good run action to the inside. Flag number 86 right there. Breaks to the outside. Watch him hold with the fake. Double fake in there. One to the fullback, one to the tailback. Waits, plenty of protection. There's Mike Flagg at 6'6". That's his third touchdown in two years against Michigan State. So Keaton Smiley has intercepted a pass and recovered a fumble. And the Hawkeyes take advantage of both opportunities, scoring twice to lead Michigan State 14-7. We'll be right back. There. You want to try something tough? Try taking this check to a widow with young kids. I've had to do it twice. You can imagine how I would have felt had I not kept in touch over the years and made sure that that check did what I told them it would. I wouldn't be able to face them. That's why I like being a State Farm agent. When we write life insurance, we work together with people and do it right. And like a good neighbor. And staying in touch keeps it right. State Farm is there. Dawn at the track, where speed and heat work relentlessly to break down motor oil. This is where we put Quaker State motor oil to the ultimate test. This is our laboratory, where we make sure Quaker State measures up to our standards and yours. Because people who care about their cars don't cut corners on quality. Quaker State, the big Q stands for quality. On the NFL today, the expectations were great, and now he's fulfilling them. John Elway, a quarterback, throws in Denver tomorrow on CBS Sports. 
Well, here's the fumble that set up the key touchdown, and it was White Sistrunk who got in there and got a hand on it and ripped the ball loose. Remember Big Otis when he played with the Raiders? And I watch number 44, Keaton Smiley, a sophomore from Duncanville, Texas, recovered the fumble that led to this touchdown. One of the three tight ends. Flag gets free, and Paholski drills him for the score. Paholski is perfect. Seven of seven for 67 yards, and that one touchdown as the Hawkeyes score 14 points in nine seconds. Now here comes Murphy to kick it off again, and he's been a star so far. He's a sophomore from New Milford, Connecticut. And they have changed return men. Ingram has replaced Miller. And again, Alta Belly feels this one. Out to the 28-yard line for a host of Buckeyes to lower their helmets on him. Dean Alta Belly. Well, tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern Time, the NFL Today, Doug Flutie. Last week, Will McDonough Clark. broke the story that he would probably go to the Green Bay Packers. We'll update it. Will he wind up with the Packers? 12.30, we'll have that answer. First time, then the education of John Elway. Boy, the Denver Broncos look tough. Dick Vermeil will drop by and take a look at some of the insides around the National Football League at 12.30 Eastern prior to our game. Bears in Minnesota, the big one. There's the toss to White. Trying to stretch the defense and turn up field. And he has tackled on that far side. George Davis was over there. Davis did a super job of going with that play and keeping on his feet. Number 37 there. We watch it from the end zone here. Sergeant leads at number 49, tries to throw a block. There's 37, just shadowing right across with Lorenzo. It comes right across and makes the play. Super job by Davis. Iowa leads the nation in that rushing defense. They've given up 15 yards a game. Folks, Lorenzo White has 18 of those yards today. Five carries. Arima straight back, right open to his rising. First down near midfield. Urema. Nice throwback pattern by Urema. He faked to the field. And uh, Iowa will roll to the strong side of the field defensively, and it will allow no underneath coverage here. You'll see there's no one between the receiver. He makes a nice catch going down for it right there. Nice job by Urema. A 15-yard gain. Urema to Ryzen. Ball is at the 47. Up in the eye. in motion the toss again to white no hole this time joe mott 97 led the defense much doing a nice job seems like they're trying to attack that side but they haven't had the kind of success that they'd like with white let's see what kind of job there's mott penetrates deep right there words off a block i think it was sergeant does a nice job and gets help from Dross, number 76. Well, one of the players being missed right now is the fullback, Bobby Morse, by the Spartans. He's a superb blocker. We've talked about the Iowa injuries, but Michigan State without its talented fullback today because of a shoulder injury. They run the delay, and that'll leave them about third and ten. Steve Thomas, who was in there in the middle of the defensive line, wrapped up white. Thomas. North Carolina rolling this year. They pull out a tight one against Georgia Tech. And Penn State will win again. Both those teams staying unbeaten, although North Carolina has tied one game. Kansas State's not quite as tough as Miami, eh? It'll be interesting to see whether or not uh, Michigan State goes with a screen here. They did a lot of timing up of screens on Thursday. And they looked very dangerous. Let's see whether or not he goes for a first down play with a pass or something tricky. Five defensive backs in this coverage against Urema. And it's the rising. He went to the first down flag before he went out of bounds on the far side to keep this drive going. First down for the Spartans. I don't know how Urema got that ball in there. Let's take another look at it. He fakes to the field to Lorenzo. Now watch rising cross from your right, right there. Oh, he almost gets that ball. That's Burt. I thought he had deflected the ball from this vantage point, but it just got by him. Yurima, five of six for 73 yards, one touchdown, and that interception when they were going in. 
Fourth Michigan quarter. State could be up by 14. Instead, they're down by seven. Here's the toss to White. He'll come to the wide side. Cannot break the tackle. That was Kyle Crow, the full safety, but there's a flag down. Nice tackle by Crow. Lorenzo looked like he wanted to go. Against the Hawkeyes, a dead ball foul. 15 yarder, first down. Let's see if he didn't get speared. Renzo White with Crow bringing him down, and Smiley and also Burke coming in late. There was no question ball, about foul the defense. First down. Ball is down to the 22. What a rivalry this has become. Two years ago, Michigan State keeps the Hawkeyes from the Rose Bowl. Last year, Iowa rallies, wins at 35-31. Here it's 14-7. Iowa leading, and they run the fullback few up the middle. Try to get the defense to chase White and Bruce Deere at 94. They're not having much of it as he brings Pew number 38 down, and that's the time remaining in the opening quarter here in Spartan Stadium. Well, it was nice of the weatherman to stop the rain. It came down hard early this morning, but we haven't had a drop once the game got underway. And we got a dandy Bruin. Peyton Fries, Iowa Hawkeyes, lead the Michigan State Spartans. It's 14-7. We'll be right back. But after this message and a word from your local station. There are lots of furnaces you can choose for your home. But for the most efficient energy, forget all but the gas furnaces. And to cut energy costs further, consider only the high-efficiency gas furnaces. Of those, only one has advanced pulse technology. The Lennox Pulse Furnace. It will make your heating more efficient. Take it from Dave Lennox. You can save a lot of gas with a pulse. Had a boy, Dave. Gas, America's best energy value. We're here live with Arby's World Series winners game. How about a prediction on the outcome, Phil? Well, Bert, that's easy. With $15 million in prizes, everybody's a winner here at Arby's. They're winning Arby's food, thousands in cash, Chevy Novas, even a Corvette convertible. Come to Arby's today for your World Series winners game card and win food, cash, and cards. I won! Phil? I won! Oh, Phil? Phil? Arby's World Series winners game. Everyone's a winner. This is CBS. This superstar was born at Mercy Hospital in Cedar Rapids. So was this one, and this one, and so are many, many more. Mothers like the high nursing standards in the Mercy birthplace, and they like those private rooms at semi-private rates. But most of all, they like the caring, supportive atmosphere, the fact that Mercy is a restful, reassuring place to bring new life into the world. Give us a call, why don't you? We'd love to show you around. Econo Foods has a brand new store in Iowa City. Tell shoppers there what they can expect to find. We love their meats. They're excellent. And the produce is always so fresh. I like to shop here because you can save money. And I think everybody in Iowa City should go out and shop, too, so they can save some money. Then they can go to the football game. You don't have to pay those large prices that you pay at the other stores. I won't name them. <laughs> We're very excited to have them in Iowa City. Big name for value, Econo Senior quarterback Dave Urema, and we asked him what he expected from the Hawkeye defense. Well, from what I've seen so far, Iowa likes to come after you. They like to bring their linebackers right up on the line, and they like to put a lot of pressure on you. And uh, the great thing about that is they're leaving guys like Andre Rise and Mark Ingram one-on-one -on -one out there, and hopefully we'll be able to hurt them in that aspect which is exactly what has happened. He hit Ingram without pressure for a touchdown. He went to rise in under pressure and threw the interception that turned this game around in the first quarter. Iowa leading Michigan State 14-7 as we start the second. Lorenzo White cannot twist free that time. And Richard Pryor, 99, led the defensive assault that time. They're bringing that strong end hard. Pryor, the strong end, replacing Mott in there. 
really came, got a lot of penetration and destroyed the timing of that play. We are in Spartan Stadium, East Lansing, Michigan, along with Eric Parsegian. I'm Brent Musburger. Michigan State scored first in this game, and Iowa came back. And it is 14-7. That's an accurate stat. 101. <laughs> Everything but the, the scoreboard. It's 14-7. That's the key number. Yeah, right. Sergeant in motion. Yurima, he has time, throws toward Ryzen, and Smiley was there with the coverage. What an afternoon Keith Smiley is having for the Hawkeyes. He has intercepted a pass. He's recovered a fumble. He's had quite an afternoon. Here's another look from the end zone. Good recovery here by Smiley. Knocks the ball away just before Ryzen can get it. And number 16. Chris Caudell, number seven, will attempt a 34-yard field goal. This would pull the Spartans to within four. Pete Risco, backup quarterback, is the holder. No good. The lead stays at seven against Michigan State. Cardell's field goal is no good, and no one is more disappointed than that young man. Well, next week, First it'll be the Michigan Iowa State Spartans the against the Michigan Wolverines. Big day for Bo Schembechler. Tonight, he can win number 200 against Wisconsin. And coming up on the Prudential College Report at halftime, Jim Nance will take a look at Schembechler and the Wolverines. And next Saturday, an important one as far as this state is concerned. And that helps recruiting. And Bo Schembechler does not like to lose to Michigan State. George Perlis is not thinking about Schembechler right now. It is a fake draw by Paholski. He's been perfect a lot of time, and he can't get it off. Nichols finally breaks free and tackles Paholski for a 10-yard loss. Well, you can't blame the offensive line because he had an awful lot of time to throw the football. Let's see, he comes back in the pocket, fakes the draw right here. He's got enough time here. Time, 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 plenty of time. Nichols finally breaks loose, and you're going to expect a sack if you you had plenty of time to release it. He could have thrown the ball and, Second and 20. gotten away from the negative yardage. That's here probably comes. the inexperience that he has. I think so. Here is second and 20 for Paholski. And he comes up inside with a conservative play. His fullback, Richard Bass. The there play. is a flag down. Okay, Richard Bass. It's against the Hawkeyes on the illegal procedure. They're going backwards. George Perlis' defense in a very good attack position. And you wonder if Hayden Fry will elect to put it up here on a seven-point advantage. 13-23 to go. Bad field position. Backup quarterback. What's your feeling, Nara? Well, the problem, he's looking at 20 yards, second down and 20 yards. He certainly doesn't want to make the error that Michigan State made on that kickoff and turn it over. Now it's going to be 25 yards. Nothing worse than that. Stand on the sideline, and you've got to go 25 Five yards penalty. for a first down from your own five. Hawkeyes have been penalized three times for 35 yards. Ball on the five. Second and 25. Second and 25 and wholesale lineup changes by the Hawkeyes. They Good. bring the wide receivers out and get a little more power into the lineup. Good place for a quick kick. All those backs are up there close here. This is that conservative formation that Hayden has featured. And with a little play fake, they come back with Marshall Cotton, a backup fullback, number 25. Well, he got it out of there Cotton from that dangerous Marshall area where you want to punt that ball. They were right on the margin there. Now at least they've got some running room. And here they come with three more substitutions. It's a little cross buck here from a sort of a stacked eye or the power eye. And Cotton comes up, gets nice blocking, picks up enough yardage to take him out, out of that danger area. This is third and 16. Ball is at the 13. And they go into punt formation. An offensive lineman was calling timeout. There's penalty flags down. Penalty markers down. Whistles had sounded. Now, I saw Craig Clark come up 
and asked for a timeout on that line. They had gone into punt formation on third down. Let's see how the officials sort it out. Timeout. That's Escape indeed what ball. happened. Before the ball was snapped. And that's exactly right. It was before the ball was snapped. Clark stood up and asked for a timeout. Timeout, Iowa. So play is stopped. Now George Purvis wants an explanation. He saw the penalty flags down. Iowa, timeout. They're first. The officials will tell George, and meanwhile, Hayden Fry will confer with his players on the sideline. We've got 12.30 to go in the first half. We're going to take a break and come right back. Iowa leads it by seven. When we want to work up a sweat, nothing works like this. Full-size Chevy pickup. Got the muscle of a fuel injector, 350 V8. And it's available on every full-size Chevy. It's got the strength of girder, main front suspension. Where? Oh, there. Plus, double wall construction. So, when you need a tough working partner. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Nothing. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> The pure, natural beauty of glass comes only from the purest sand. One of the few inexhaustible natural resources. And glass can be recycled again and again to bring you more and more of the good things that come in glass, just as their maker intended. Brought to you by the people who make glass containers naturally. The Michigan Wolverines, a team of explosive dimensions. But can they control the one-man explosion of Heisman hopeful Lorenzo White next Saturday on CBS Sports? Eric, count the number of players out there for you Iowa. You see, they're short one man. You count one, two on the right side. There's three over here. Clark is trying to call timeout. And, of course, they, he realizes that they're short one man. And it's danger of being blocked. So you see him stand up right here, calling timeout, just as the ball is snapped. Now, it's a close call. But the officials say that, that it was a timeout call. Now, remember, they were in punt formation on third down. So they reinsert Paholski for this third down play. He rolls to the right, pump fake, down the sideline towards Smith and overthrew him. Smith had slipped. And he was triple covered deep by the Spartans. They were not fooled. They wanted to get to the speedster Robert from Smith, Dallas, Texas. This is a good call by, you see Smith right here. They're trying to run deep on him right there on third down and long. See if they can get a one-on-one -on -one maximum protection there. No one else goes out. The only man, Smith turns back to the inside if he could have hit him right there. But here's the punt. Oscar Bala hangs it up and Todd Crum at the 35. Gets down to the 49-yard line. Marv Cook, 84, brings him down. And it was a 52-yard punt and a 13-yard return by Crum, who has replaced Bobby Morse as the punt return man. So tomorrow, the NFL on CBS after the NFL today, Jerry Burns Vikings doing a job, but can they handle the Bears at Mike Ditka? Washington, New Orleans, Giants, St. Louis, Philadelphia, Atlanta. Those are our early games. Then late, Dallas against Denver, a test for John Elway, or Tampa Bay against the Rams. Michigan State with a first down on their own 48. They trail it by seven. There's the toss to White. Dave Haight, number 64, grabbing at his jersey well, carrier, and gained about a right. yard. Haight did a nice job of coming off of his block and flowing with the play. Error, they're doing a much better job against White than they did last year in Iowa City. What's the difference defensively? So far, they've been flowing. They, uh, White has not been able to get leverage at the corner. I think they probably would be better off if they used a couple of isolation plays or power plays right to the inside with White. He's carried they, 10 times for 25. Send him out as a pass receiver. Throw back incomplete the other way. There was something wrong with that pattern. Well, they they had two men right there on the spot where Urema threw the ball. Gasevich thought the ball was intended for him. You're right. There was a pattern breakup that time. And Gasevich looks like maybe he says I was the problem. He's a tight end. Let's see it again. Good fake. 
Let's see right here. Is Kasefich re re uh, recoiling right there? Well, I think maybe... I think he was trying to throw the ball to Ingram that time, coming across the middle. They had two receivers in the same place. An error. And this is a throwing down again. Coming to the right, under pressure. Throws it for Ingram, who cannot get the handle incomplete. That would have been short of a first down anyway. The Spartans will punt it away, and the Hawkeyes get another shot here at the 11.28 mark of the first half. Good defensive series for the Hawkeyes. Dross came across, put a lot of pressure on. That is Peter Marciano, the nephew of the great and former heavyweight Peter champion Ryan of the world, Peter Rocky Marciano. Marciano. He played high school football back there in Brockton, Massachusetts, where he was a spectacular high school wide receiver. Great speed. Now we'll see him for the first time. Montgomery, the punter for the Spartans. Whoa, whoa. Oh, boom, this one high. Marciano says, no, you won't see me, Brent. Whoa. Down inside the five. Down inside. Great punt by Montgomery. 46 yards and no return. Again, the Hawkeyes get bad field position. We'll be right back. Down by Mr. Goodwrench knows your car's engine is an inferno of heat and friction. 100, 200 piston strokes of engine wear per second. It needs the life-saving fluid that protects it right. GM Goodwrench Motor Oil. Takes the friction, takes the heat. It's everything General Motors asks for in a fine motor oil. Get it from Mr. Goodwrench. No one knows your GM car better. No one. I tell you, I fly a lot. That's why I look for those mileage clubs. But it don't always pay off. Oh, there was one airline I told the guy. I got a lot of miles. What can you give me? He offered me a lube job. I told him, forget about it. What I'd like is a free trip to another airline. So now I fly Western. I tell you, I went from no class to first class. No one rewards you like Western Airlines. It's the only way to fly. Finding a phone in a car isn't that unusual anymore, except when it leaves the car for greener pastures, the high seas, or a leisurely lunch. Radio Shack keeps you in constant communication with their affordable, transportable cellular telephone. Hello? Oh, well, yes, he's right here. It's for you. Yes, I heard about the merger. Buy 100 shares. The affordable, transportable cellular telephone, only at Radio Shack. Mark Vlasic with the headset, the leading passer in the country, out with an injured shoulder, his backup itching to get a chance, the freshman, Dan McGuire. But McGuire won't see any action as long as Tom Paholsky keeps it up. Paholsky is 7 of 8 for 67 yards and one touchdown. He's having a great afternoon. You know, that's a lot of pressure on the Iowa team. You lose your quarterback, starting quarterback, lose your starting fullback, but both of the substitutes are performing well. Trying to be heard. Trying to audible off. The Spartans say there was movement by the offensive line, and they jump across. Well, let's see what the officials call here. Well, they're all right. Goes against the Hawkeyes. Now, Hayden Fry's team was troubled a lot in Columbus, Ohio. By its inability to be heard, that was the now departed Chuck Long. And they are in the closed in here. Paholsky could not be heard. Yep, the left guard, Chris Gamble, number 74 move. See, Nicholas picks it up immediately. There's that power eye formation that they use, and they run the fullback out of it. Good penetration by the Spartans that time. Of course, you could see that Hayden Fry sent that play in, wanted a conservative play to try to get him away from that goal line, avoid a safety. Watch the penetration, and then the swarming. Bayless. Right there, I think it was number... And Nichols. Couldn't Bayless quite see who that was that got all the penetration. Uh, Bayless was the ball carrier, the tailback. I think I said fullback. It was the tailback. You can see Bass leads him, and Cotton is also in there. This time, 
They cross puck into the middle, and the Hawkeyes having a lot of difficulty moving the ball from this field position down here. Goodman carry. Well, uh, Hayden is a crafty old guy. Marshall. He knows he's been and around a long time. He knows that any kind of error on the part of his ball club down here is going to surrender the ball to the Spartans in terrible field position. And field position is very, very important. Did you say Wiley Old Fox? Did he let on all week that Tom Paholsky was going to be a starting quarterback? Did he deceive anybody? No. Hey, never happened. Third down and six. Here's Paholsky. And he was hit first by Larson. Number three hammered him. Michigan State's got to be careful. They're going to come up with another rushing penalty for late hits. It's very close. Taking another look here. He fakes the inside push. The pass. Paholsky keeps it. And there's Larson, number three. Now, Spartans should get field position. Oscar Ball is punt. Good favorable bounce. Gets across midfield. It'll roll dead near the 46-yard line. That's a 41-yard punt. And an Iowa roll at the end helped out. 41 yards off a kick. But here it is, 14-7. Brown defeated Princeton in the Ivy League. And Northwestern would like to have been playing another Ivy League team today. Indiana, <laughs> one of those underrated squads. Jeff Berger lights it up again for Auburn this afternoon. Joe Paterno stays unbeaten with those Nittany Lions. And Georgia in a tough defense. Battle wins by four. Here's Yurima. First down. Spartans trail it by seven on first down. He hits Rising. Rising to the 35-yard line. That's an 18-yard game. Great throw by Yurima. Rising was not that open. Had coverage on him. He delivered the ball perfectly. Here's a end zone shot of it. Watch through the right side of your screen as Rise and moves into the picture right here. There's the throw right there in between two defenders. And Burt number three finally catches up along with number nine, Sims. Shevitz the tight end. He's in motion. Again on first down. Perlis to throw it. You're in it, Lord Risen. Knocked away. Oh. Ten stems, and there's a penalty marker down on the play. Let's see if we can pick up the, inter the interference. He got one on one here, and Ryzen just goes to the inside. Here comes Sims back to the inside, the only starter coming back from last year. Let's see if he makes contact before the ball's there. His right hand, you can't see. Boy, that's awful close. Let's take a look awful from a close. different angle, Aaron, and see if another angle gives us a little more revealing shot. Well, he reaches First with down. his right hand and grabs Bryson's right arm. Yep. I thought it was very, very close. It was very close, but I think his right arm grabs Sims' right arm grabs Ryzen's right arm, pulls it down just before the ball got now that's there. That's 52 yards of penalties here against the Hawkeyes. And the ball is down at the 20. And oh, White was pounded at that time. Jeff Ross, Ross 76. Showing you why he's an All American candidate. 6'5 and 260, 286. He veered to the inside, came clean on it, and he really stopped Lorenzo. Heisman, what? Big Jeff. Chris McHale. Please report. We had him as a defensive player of the year last year in the Michigan State Iowa game. He's a good talking about Ross. This is second and 12 for Yurima. Ryzen and Ingram, the dangerous wide receiver. Ryzen, Yurima's right. Ingram up to the left. Coming on the blitz and the Spartans pick it up. He wants Ingram who's all alone.
get the extra point. We are deadlocked with 8.05 to go in the first half. Dave Urema's second touchdown pass to flanker Mark Ingram era. And they had a blitz on the, the Hawkeyes did. Urema picked it up. He got one-on-one -on -one with Ingram. You see him run right by, smiling, number 44, wide open, get the feet in, and the official's right there, touchdown. I think he got one foot in. Not sure about the second one. Might have been an incompletion in the NFL, but definitely not here. We'll be right back. Do you have anything in aviation? The Army's most technical training. Are there any openings in communications? Is also the Army's most popular training. I'd really like computers. So it pays to have a reservation. Electronics. If you qualify, you can get a guaranteed reservation for the training you want up to 12 months in advance, even if you're still in high school. We'll see you after graduation. Find your future in the Army. Congratulations. This is the car, the number nine Ford Thunderbird, Bill Elliott's race car. This is Bill Elliott's motor oil, Unical 76. It's won every Grand National race he's won. It's the same oil you can buy for your car at 76 stations. And this, this is Bill Elliott. Ready, boys? Go with the spirit. Try Bill's motor oil. Spirit of 76. Tomorrow, Herschel Walker and the Cowboys are going to taste Denver's deadly orange crush. Double header action starts with the NFL Today on CBS Sports. Well, Era, Iowa tried to bring some heat. Right, they brought Burke from here. They brought Davis, the linebacker, from there. These other men all came in a blitz. You got single coverage out here with Ingram on Smiley, and you'll see what happens. Ingram is too tough to cover one-on-one. -on -one. Smiley tries. Ingram makes a move to the inside. Runs by him, he has 4.5 speed, and you see now Smiley is a trailer, not a defender. Now watch the senior from Flint, Michigan, as he works the far corner of the end zone. His left foot is down, that's good in college football. That's out in the National Football League. Gotta have them both in. We are tied at 14 as Ingram has scored two touchdowns. <laughs> Looks like we got shades of the same game we had last year where 66 points were scored. They're up to 28 now with 8.05 to go in this quarter. Smith and Burt will be back deep for the Hawkeyes to return this kick by Montgomery. Ingram has caught three balls here this afternoon for 66 yards and two touchdowns. There's the man who set it up with a great punt. Because Iowa could not get out of bad field position. Michigan State took over near midfield, and the Spartans moved in. Oh, that kicking game. This will be Smith. Fumbled into the end zone. He'll down it right there for a touchdown. Now there is an intelligent return man. He fumbled it outside of the end zone, and instead of thinking, my goodness, I've got to get it out of here right now, they're coming after me, he just downed it right there and said, let's go play at the 20. Great smart move by Robert Smith. And how about in the Notre Dame game, Crump fair catching that kickoff when it looked like he was going to get knocked down before the ball got there. Tom Paholsky, whose father was a major league pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals and the Chicago Cubs. Brings the Hawkeyes to the line of scrimmage. Tied here at 14. That tight formation with the Holsky checking off at the line, and the backs are confused. The Holsky, oh, and it's hot. The gamble fails, and they hit Morrow. He is out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Oh, error that could have gone the other way. It was an audible. They saw they had single coverage to the outside. He got it there. He took the chance. It was very... Could have been very costly. There you see the backs really got confused. They weren't sure. There's the throw to the outside. Didn't quite get there this time. And that was a fellow that intercepted two balls against Notre Dame. So Jim Morrow, the senior from Des Moines, Iowa, gives the Hawkeyes some breathing room, and he was out at the 35, the officials now said. 
first and ten. Baholski, right side, incomplete, wanted Morrow again. He was open, he just overthrew him on the play. Good pass routes run by the Hawkeye receivers. Read the defense perfectly, got into the seam, but Baholski just overthrew him a bit. This will be second and ten. Bass has replaced Hudson here this afternoon. Five foot eight inch fullback. He'll be in front of Bayless. Senlinger to snap it to Paholski. And they come with Bayless off the draw. And the Spartans were led defensively by Joe Bergen, number 45, who sealed it up along with Bayless. Shane Bullock. The ball carrier. 41. 41 Shane Bullock. And 83. Mark Nichols. Made the stop. Bergen recovered a fumble early on in this game. Ball on the Iowa. This will be a third and seven with the ball at the Iowa 38 yard line. A throwing down for Paholski. Well, he had receivers open on that first down play, Brent. Looks like it might be a blitz. Nope. Rolls to the right. Throws on the move. Complete. No way. Hammered loose. Oh, the belly put a hat on him on the far side. Morrow had a completion. And the young man who knocked the ball loose from Kimmy Brown two weeks ago has come up with another spectacular hit. He's supposed to be a student there. <laughs> he is going to hit the guys this hard. And he's only about 185 pounds. Watch this contact. He can really hit. His timing is beautiful. Morrow, the ball's right there. There looks like a catch. Boom, the ball flies out because Altabelli really puts a hit on him. Astrabala on fourth down. And they put Altabelli deep. And he will pick it up and slips free for about eight more yards. That's a bit of a gamble when a punt return man elects to come back that late. But Dean Altabelli knew what he was doing. A 45-yard punt, and Altabelli gets nine of it back here for Dave Urena. Pretty smart fellow. He's an academic All-American. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. We're tied at 14. Who says you can't have 100% imported hops and a less filling beer? Only the word aging and a less filling beer. Smooth, super premium taste and a less filling beer. Michelob Light, the best of both worlds. Michelob Light, oh yes you can. Have it all. the NFL today. The expectations were great, and now he's fulfilling them. John Elway, a quarterback, throws in Denver tomorrow on CBS Sports. Era, did Morrow have possession on this ball before Altabelli lowered the boom? It's very close, but the official makes a judgment call on it. He's got to have possession. The rule this year says if there's any doubt at all, it's no possession. That was the new rule that was put in this year. And thus there was doubt. First and ten for the Spartans. Yurima. Dumps it over the middle of the screen for Lorenzo White. And running room to the 40 with George Davis with a hand on his jersey. 13 yards. Good first down call also. Surprised the Hawkeyes. Looked like that same pass that Urema was throwing, and he dumped the ball off. Era, the Spartan offensive assistants are doing an excellent job. Hayden Fry's defensive coaches are changing defensive ends in passing situations. They want Urema to throw on first down so that they've got the run-oriented ends in there and thus reduce the rush. So far, it's working. Urema's 8 of 12 for 126 yards and two touchdowns. They'll run the fullback this time on first down, and Dan Worth, the okay. linebacker, puts a shoulder field. into it. Breeze, the right tackle, 57, John did a Breeze. nice job defensively. Say one thing about that Hawkeye team. They hit well. Good contact football team. 
Last year's Rose Bowl representatives in the Big Ten trying to get back again. Next three weeks, the round robin between Iowa, Michigan State, and Michigan. Alabama jumps out to a touchdown lead. The toss to White. Slants for another first down. Rick Schmidt tackling in. Now they hit the inside seam. They tried to contain Lorenzo, but they pre-called an off-tackle play that time. And Lorenzo found the seam. They've been taking the outside away. Let's look at it from ground view. They seal off the inside. Now he turns inside the, the end who was trying to contain. Good play. Joe Pugh made a nice block on the lead block. An era they ran against five defensive backs that time. They had the nickel in the game for the Hawkeyes. The ball is at midfield here in Spartan Stadium. Sargent in motion. Rima rolls to the right and throws underneath the coverage. Football. Iowa. The Hawkeyes recover Dave Haight. The nose guard gets back and recovers the fumble. Recovered by 64, Dave Haight. And it was that hitting that you were talking about that set that up. Real good contact. Oh, what? Sargent is wide open on this number 49. We can't quite see him here. Throws the ball to Pew, makes a nice catch, but look at this contact. That's White first on him. There comes the ball flying out. There's 49, who was wide open. I thought Urema was going to throw him the ball. Davis and Sims were in there on the hit, allowing first Dave Hayes to show good hustle for a nose go. Ball is at the 33 for Paholsky and the Hawkeyes. Releases incomplete. That was Dave Wolf, 56, who got in defensively for the Spartans. Good job. You know, one of the things that George Perlis was concerned about was the protection of the I.O. offensive line. They didn't think they could get to that passer, but they've done a pretty decent job. Sarah, how much heat are they getting on the center here with this Michigan State defense? There seems to be an exchange problem in there with Paholsky and Simlinger. I don't know because they haven't worked together. You see, he doesn't quite get the ball clean. And he gets it right there. You see a lot of stunning in there. The Iowa, and a good job by Wolf. Second and ten. They run the delay with Bayless. To the 35. This will set up third and long for the Hawkeyes. And you know the thing that this uh, struck me up here looking down. Most of the time this afternoon, in this first half, that the Hawkeyes have thrown the ball, they've had receivers open. They've run good routes. Let's see what Hayden comes up with here. From the Iowa 35. From the 35, the third and eighth call for Hayden Fry. And he's got his first down. This is tight end Marv Cook, number 84. They were using three tight ends, and Paholsky hit Cook for 19 yards. A good throw by Paholsky. You see it from the end zone here. They fake a sweep to the right. Paholsky comes back. Now you see Cook come from left to right. There's the ball delivered right there before number 44 Miller can get there. And it's a first down and a good play by the Hawkeyes. We are live from Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan. Michigan State and Iowa are tied at 14. Four minutes and 47 seconds to go in the first half. The Hawkeyes of Iowa with a first down. Tom Paholsky under pressure throws incomplete. The scoring summary in this game. Yurima to Ingram, 27 yards, and Michigan State moved up by seven. But then like lightning, the Hawkeyes came back. They tied it on a run by fullback Bass from 12 yards out. The kickoff was fumbled, and one play later, Paholsky hit flag for the touchdown that put the Hawkeyes in front. Then in the second quarter, it was Yurima again going to his talented wide receiver, and Ingram pulled this one in for his second touchdown of the game. And Yurima and the Spartans are all even with the Hawkeyes at 14. Second and ten. Hawkeyes are having trouble picking up Mark Nichols, number 83. He's getting a lot of pressure on the passer. Second and ten, and Paholsky with a deep drop. Under pressure, throws incomplete out of bounds. There's a penalty flag down at the line of scrimmage. David Wolf put pressure on the passer again. Illegal receiver down the field. Huh. 
assumed eligible receiver downfield. He was easy to pick up. Chris Gamble just walked back to the huddle from about 15 yards downfield. He's only 6'7". <laughs> Folks, the official <laughs> could hardly miss him when he got... He says, I always wanted to be a tight end. I got size for that. Come on, Hayden. Somehow he missed the call. Was that a guard eligible? Everybody else was blocking, uh, pass that? protecting. I'd like to have a little piece of the action here. <laughs> Boy, the Hawkeyes have been penalized a lot here in the first Still half so far. Down. That's the sixth penalty against Iowa for 57 yards. Ineligible receiver downfield. And just one for Michigan. Oh, Iowa, five yard Michigan penalty. State. Was, you'll see Michigan next week against the Spartans. Michigan State here on CBS. This is second and 15. Straight back. Waholski throws underneath to Smith. Looking for running room. And he is wrapped up. That'll leave about 10 yards to go. Tim Moore and John Miller, 42 and 44. Had the little man corral. The principle of that defense is they want to complete a pass for three or four yards, go ahead. Everybody was sinking back deep, and they tried to hit Smith, but Smith was running across the field rather than up the field, and of course it was tough for him to turn up. Hey, Fry's got to be thinking, when am I going to let the big fella get in there and try? <laughs> Folks, wait till you see his six foot eight inch quarterback. I'm telling you, he can really hum it. He says he can throw it. Hayden said he can throw it farther than any quarterback he's ever had. But Baholski is 4-7 on third down this afternoon. So he's keeping everybody over there on the sideline with a splendid performance here for Coach Fry. Incomplete through behind the receiver that time. Mike Flagg is the receiver. Trump on the play for State. Fourth down. Iowa. Mike Flagg from the top of your screen crossing Michigan over. State, the ball is thrown Elgin slightly Dulling. behind him. Let's take a look at it here. It had receivers open. You'll see number 35, Crum, jump Gary on him on Oscar coverage. Bali. The ball is thrown slightly behind. Ostrabala. Hunts and Altabelli. Gonna let this one go out of bounds. Go to the official. Moving up to the 17 yard line. We'll be right back. I want my Serta. Here's why people want their Serta. Why they're spoiled for any other mattress. Only Serta goes beyond just being firm. Beyond what others do. We top our support with the extra comfortable Serta surface. A unique difference you can feel in a Serta Perfect Sleeper. Perfect Sleeper on sale now during the National Home Furnishing Sale at participating stores. It's all part of the Perfect Sleeper Golden Anniversary Celebration. Northwestern, Michigan State and Iowa tied quarter, at 14. Alabama, Last year, do you remember? We had a shootout in Iowa City. Bobby McAllister played quarterback for the Spartans. The Hawkeyes thought it was going to be easy. This was Michigan against Michigan State, which you'll see next week. Harbaugh to his tight end, Eric Hattis, for the touchdown. Then on the following series, Montgomery was back to punt, and Heron got in to block it. The ball rolled into the end zone, was recovered by the Wolverines, and they went on to blow the Spartans out of their own stadium, 31-0. Next week, here on CBS, you will see the Spartans of Michigan State against the Wolverines of Michigan as the round robin continues, because two weeks from today, it'll be these Iowa Hawkeyes against the Wolverines in Ann Arbor. And unless Ohio State shows more, than they did the first few weeks when we saw them era. The Rose Bowl winner is going to come out of the Iowa, Michigan State, Michigan confrontation. Could very well be. A little early to be counting first Buckeyes out. State, at the first it's first and ten at the 413 mark in the first half. Toss to White. Cut back beautifully that time. Terry Burt, number three, along with John Breeze, 57. That was one of his better-looking individual efforts. It was a good job by Lorenzo. This is the worst starting position here, field-wise, for the Spartans. They get daylight. They Everybody's chasing to the outside for him. And Lorenzo sees the daylight inside and picks up five yards. He is one of the more dangerous cutback runners in college football, especially on artificial turf. Those yep. numbers reflect a doggone good job by the Hawkeyes, 13 for 36. 
Now they've been very aware of that cutback. And they've been pursuing and watching that lane. This time they run him and he cannot get out of Richard Pryor's grasp as the junior from Elizabeth, New Jersey, along with Dan Worth from Des Moines, bring him down. Well, you talk about a national recruiting program. You take a look at the Hawkeyes. He gets players out of Texas, good ones. He gets six foot eight inch quarterbacks out of California. He gets defensive linemen out of New Jersey. He gets running backs out of New York. George Perlis, he gets down into Ohio. Battle Schembechler here in Michigan. Third and five. Third and five for Urema. Pulls to the right. To Ryzen. First down. Urema. Sims on the cover. Beautiful route that was run by Ryzen and a beautiful throw by Urema. It's very First tough down. to stop because they read the defense as well. You see from the end zone here, you see Ryzen come into your picture right between the seam. Look at him split the zones. Deeper than, deep than the outside backers and inside backers and in front of Sims, the left cornerback, number nine. And that 13 yards puts the ball at the 35-yard line. Two minutes and 38 seconds to go first here in the down. first half. We are tied at 14. 36. Bishevitz in motion. And a throw underneath the defense that time that's complete and he went to his fullback that was pew who has Never replaced Davis. morse and on davis receiver, was pew. on the coverage bruce okay, gear did a nice job number 94 putting the pressure on your he had to pull up and then uh, throw the ball under a little heat so your waiting for the play to come in from the sideline sergeant will deliver it to him as Perlis's offensive assistants rotate tight ends here. Yurima comes up behind Sherman, who is a fine center. Five defensive backs he's looking at this time. Throwing deep. Ingram is open. Has to hold up a second incomplete. He's put those zones again. Had him beat. Ball was on his fingertips. He thinks there was interference, but I think it's okay. Let's take a look at that seam that you're talking about, Eric. Right here is Ingram. He'll come up the field and split the seam between Burt and the outside, which is Sims. Watch here. He runs right to the inside. Beats him. He's got him beat. Sims, number nine. Oh, the deep free safety comes over right here. I'm sorry it wasn't Burt. But right there, it's in his hands. He, think he, he thinks he had interference, but I think it was okay. Era, I'll tell you, he was open, yeah. and Urema's ball yeah. hung a little bit in the air. That's a very good point, Brent. Rima has received the play from the sideline. It is third and ten. He's got 141 to go. State. And Michigan State Michigan will State. call a timeout. timeout. First. So while they get settled up, why don't we take a look at these two fine campuses? Iowa, located back in Iowa City, Iowa. The University of Iowa. Inspiring students to explore, to learn, to share. Embracing the belief that liberal arts, the sciences, and international studies are essential in preparing students for life in a changing and complex world community. The University of Iowa, lighting a path in the future from the heartland of America. At America's premier land-grant university, we've produced five Rhodes Scholars in four years and the nation's most widely used anti-cancer drug. We're the home of the nation's Institute for Research on Teaching and the national superconducting cyclotron. We're proud to be the pioneers of the land-grant commitment serving people. On the banks of the Red Cedar, Michigan State University, East Lansing. Well, near the end of this game, Era and I will be participating in a 16-year tradition. We will select a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game, and Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of both Michigan State and Iowa. We are tied at 14, 141 to go. The Spartans with a third and 10 from their own 36. And they were ready for Lorenzo White. Steve Thomas, number 52 from Lincoln, Nebraska, led the defense, and they read the play perfectly that time. Sprint draw, but it didn't work. He dropped the ball. Hawkeyes to get a shot here in the first half. 
time winds down inside of 120. If you're wondering about timeouts, the Hawkeyes have two left. There's Montgomery, the kicker, all Big Ten last season, honorable mention All-American. We saw him put one clear up over top of the stadium. Almost brought that rain back down on us for that last one. I snap again. This one a Nine. lot lower. Let's see if we get a shot at Marciano. We're gonna let the ball roll down, and it'll be down by the Spartans there at the 21. 51 seconds to go after down that 46-yard punt. How about at halftime? Prudential College Football Report from New York. Jim Nance will have a piece on Bo Schimbeckler. He's the dean. First Go get number Iowa. 200, is it? Tonight that Bo's Number's going 21. after. Jim Nance will have that story and all the scores and highlights. He's mellowed. He's not nearly as <laughs> tough as he used to be. Oh, come on. Yes, he is. Come on. He's a well, I'm going to see him next week. Come he on. Is. He'll let oh. you know all his closed practices. He gives you the game plan. <laughs> he's a pushover. <laughs> well, I trained him. I won't be there for a couple of weeks. i got to miss it. <laughs> I'll see yeah, we'll miss Iowa you next game. week, right? On first down, the Hawkeyes are content to keep the clock moving here. Well, they've got. Uh, wonder whether Hayden's going to go back in there in that locker room and think about bombs away with McGuire in the second half because he can really put it up. I'll say this about Paholski: he's really played a fine first half thus far, and the Hawkeyes have had receivers open. I mean, there's been open receivers in that secondary. I remember his daddy, Tom Paholski. Uh, he was a bulldog of a pitcher. He had some stuff when he came up. You bet. I think you know, I've still got his baseball card someplace. You know, <laughs> back in the early. Fit. Hey, my grandson wants it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's Paholski handing off this time to Kevin Palmer. That's Ronnie's brother who checked into the game, and he runs out the clock Ronnie here in the Curry. first half. Tackled by Al Cadelli. End of the first half. Michigan State 14. We had four Iowa. touchdowns in the first half. And the one that pulled Michigan State even was this one from Dave Urema to Mark Ingram. It was the second time this combination had hooked up for the score. And we go in to the locker room tied at 14. The Spartans file in first, and here come the Hawkeyes. Good game so far. I've been shot at, shot up, and shot down. So I don't take chances on anything. I won't touch a filter that isn't from AC. Why well, mess with air filters that can't go for up to 30,000 miles? Or oil filters that can't deliver up to 15,000? For the AC Delco retailer nearest you, just give me a call at 1-800-AC-DELCO. If you put your muscle into a job, use your head and do it with AC Delco. Sometimes getting car financing turns out to be one long hassle. What uh, kind of car did you have in mind? A Fiero. Oh, an Italian car. It's a Pontiac from General Motors. You know, Motors. they make Chevrolets, Oldsmobiles, Buicks, Cadillacs. GMC trucks. This is none of my business, but those are not Italian cars. Make it easy on yourself. Finance your car or truck right at your GM dealer with GMAC. You understand, we do have to know what you want to do with all these cars. Nobody knows more about financing and leasing cars than GMAC. This is CBS. I'm here to personally invite you to get in on the biggest savings event of the year. It's World Radio's grand opening sale and is going on now at our brand new Cedar Rapids store. We've got the same great World Radio service and an even bigger selection of brand names. RCA, Zenith, Panasonic, Sony, all at grand opening savings. Like a Panasonic stereo system complete with cabinet and remote control, only $266. World Radio's grand opening sale. I guarantee you won't want to miss it. Just wait till the doors open. Everyone, it's time. Surprise! Happy anniversary. Sea or diamonds and absolute glacier. Do you think I'm too predictable? I knew you were going to say that. Your silver's gorgeous. I always watch David Latterman. We're related, you know. And that love seat. How could you afford it all? Hurry, everyone. Don't miss it. Say, save. Save! Get the lowest prices of the season at Donaldson's anniversary sale. It's worth celebrating. Make no mistake, this 
is a big one. In any motor that Yonder repairs gets the same thing, just good old-fashioned service. Yonder Electric Motor Service, 1716 Blairs Ferry Road, Northeast to direct. Sports presents the Prudential College Football Report. Sponsored by the Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and other financial services. The Prudential, the rock, it's strong, it's on the move, it's bigger than life. Jim Nance in New York, the Prudential College Football Report tied up. This is like last year's game that was so close, but there's a big upset out there today in college football, so let's get right to the scores. First of all, in the top ten, where tonight a real mismatch in Miami, Northern Illinois 0-5 will take on the number one Canes. Yesterday at Miami, the school formed a special committee that will report in three weeks to the university president concerning recent conduct of the football team off the field. Now, the scores. Notre Dame trailing Alabama now in the second quarter. The Tide with their highest ranking since Ray Perkins has been the coach there at Alabama. Here you go. Under three minutes to go. South Carolina in front of number three, Nebraska. This is the only time all year the Cornhuskers will play on the natural grass. And they're having a real hard time. They only had 100 yards rushing in the first half, and they averaged much, much more. There was a sack by the Gamecock defense. But what a day it's been for their tailback, Harold Green. Here's Green. Now, this is in the second quarter. Watch him dance around and go 56 yards with a touchdown. He's added two more himself in the fourth quarter. There have been three lead changes at all here in the final period. And South Carolina has the latest score. They have the ball on their own 20 with three minutes to go and Nebraska trailing 24 to 20. Number four, Michigan, will meet Wisconsin tonight. And Bo Schimbeckler looking for his 200th career win. And we'll have more on that later here at halftime. Penn State in front of Rutgers. They win it 31 to 6. And in that game, Ray Roundtree, 34 yards he will go on the end around. Penn State lost the first time these two met back in 1918. But Rutgers has lost 14 in a row now. As Penn State pounds him today to up their record to 4 and 0. Oh. Oklahoma over Kansas State now in the third quarter. The Sooners scored the first 28 points of this game, and they played today without quarterback Jamel Holloway with a bruised shoulder suffered in that Miami game last week. Auburn pouring it on at halftime against Western Carolina, and Pat Dye is going for career win number 100 in his head coaching career. Arkansas a final now over TCU, but the Razorbacks had a tough time for almost 100 yards, passed for another 198. The Razorbacks now 4-0 with that win today in conference play. Tonight, USC against Oregon, and that game at the Coliseum. Next week, Arizona will go against UCLA, a game many of you will see here on CBS. California and Washington, other games involving ranked teams. That is just underway now in Seattle. Number 14, Texas A&M, the Southwest Conference opener for the defending conference champions. And they're shutting out Texas Tech in the second. UCLA and Arizona State, it's been all field goals at the Rose Bowl so far in that game. It's the third quarter. Florida and LSU, the Gator quarterback, Kerwin Bell, hurt a knee in the third quarter, left the game. Now under two minutes to go, and LSU with an 11-point lead. In the East, Army 16 points better than Yale, and that is in the fourth quarter. Dartmouth and Navy at the, now that is not in the halftime, that's third quarter. And we talked this year about Napoleon McCallum's replacement of the backfield for the midshipman. His name is Chuck Smith, and here's a look at him. Smith here goes 32 yards. He had over 100 in the first half. And Navy shutting out Dartmouth now as they start the third quarter. In the Midwest, Ohio State looking for their third consecutive win. They're beating Illinois, shutting them out in the fourth. Minnesota over Purdue. The Bullermakers freshman quarterback, Jeff George, concussion. He's out of the ball game. And Wyoming and Iowa State, the Cyclones, have just scored a touchdown in the third to go up by four. Still ahead of us here at halftime, a special look at Bo Schimbeckler, who could be only hours away from a major coaching milestone. And, of course, we'll have more scores and highlights as the Prudential College Football Report continues here on CBS with results from the East. It's a jungle. That's how it feels when you're searching for life insurance. The natives don't speak your language. You feel lost, in the dark, scared. But there is a sign of civilization. With Prudential, your agent will explain things clearly and work with you until you have a piece of the rock you feel comfortable with. No wonder more people choose Prudential for life insurance than any other company. You'll feel right by the rock. Prudential Life Insurance.
An investment firm is only as impressive as it is responsive. Good to go. So when interest rates fell, we looked for new ways for our clients to make money and developed unique opportunities like the Prudential Real Estate Investment Trust, a first of its kind in a way to take advantage of changing markets. While others may imitate it, we're busy surpassing it. If anyone can show you bold new thinking in the business of making money, it's close it. It's Prudential Beach, rock solid, market wise. Jim Nance in New York, and again, the big story today in college football, Nebraska and South Carolina, under two minutes to go. Oh, we just received word that Nebraska has scored a touchdown with a minute and 50 to go as South Carolina fumbled the football inside their own 20, and the Cornhuskers, as we speak, have just taken it in with the extra point still to come. 26-24, 150 left in that game. Now, streaks continue in the East as we show more finals. Penn over Columbia. The Lions haven't won now in their last 27 games. Holy Cross beat Colgate 16-12, to that final. Brown off to their best start now in 10 years with a win today. In the South, Georgia over Mississippi, 14-10. Bulldogs' 10th straight win against the Rebels. North Carolina and Georgia Tech, 58 seconds to go in that game. An 11-yard touchdown put the heels in front. Then Tech missed a field goal from 55 yards in the closing seconds. Virginia and Wake Forest, a similar story. 56 seconds left in that game. Jeff Goffney kicked a field goal for Virginia from 36 yards to put the Cavaliers in front. Wake Forest drove. They got it down to the 12-yard line. Two seconds to go. They missed the 29-yard field goal, so the Cavaliers escape with a two-point win. Clemson shuts out the Citadel today as they go down to three and one on the year. Virginia Tech over West Virginia. It doesn't get any easier for the Mountaineers. Next week, they will host number one Miami. In the Midwest, Indiana now four and zero on the year. You might recall the Hoosiers last year had the same start four and zero before they lost their final seven games. Kent State and Central Michigan. Seven lead changes in this game. A 36-yard touchdown pass. Pat Young to Eric Dye with 12 seconds left, won it for the Golden Flashes. Fresno State and San Jose State, that game will be getting started in just a few moments. The Bulldogs have the longest major college winning streak in the nation at 13 games. I love Fresno, you know. I, you know, I, you know, I advise anyone to come down here and visit, you know, and come watch, you know, Fresno State. Right now, Fresno State football is hotter than a day in the California desert. And the Bulldogs this week are in the AP Top 20 poll for the first time since 1942. They always say we haven't played anybody and we're out in the buoys nowhere, but <laughs> Fresno really is starting to get noticed. A member of the Pacific Coast Athletic Association, the Bulldogs don't have much bite in their schedule. Fresno State is an emerging, viable football program, I think, who can play anybody. And when I say play anybody, I mean anybody in the country. Calling the signals is their Heisman candidate and coach's son, Kevin Sweeney, who this year is expected to break the all-time passing yardage record. The possibilities of, of the Heisman Trophy coming to Fresno, I don't... It's not as great as they are to, to go to Miami, especially after Vinny's uh, performance Saturday. And just how would this team fare against number one, Miami? I wouldn't be real anxious to try to find out. <laughs> Fresno State, you got to give them credit now with that long winning streak out there. Updating a couple of scores now. Alabama has added a touchdown. Two touchdowns up now on the Irish. Second quarter. The extra point for Nebraska was good. So the Cornhuskers lead at 27-24 over the Gamecocks. 126 left in that game. In baseball, the Yankees beat the Red Sox today 5-3. Don Mattingly went 3-5 for five in that game. Up his average now to 352. And when we come back, we'll take a look at Michigan's Glenn Chimbeck the man they call Bo. You're watching the Prudential College Football Report here on CBS where the scores continue from around the country. Bugsy, stay. Make sure your auto insurance is under control when your car's not. Have your Prudential representative give you a fast, free pro review of your coverage. Are you covered? I don't know. You'd know with a Prudential pro review. The right coverage is no accident. Oh, my God. Get a pro review from the Prudential and get a piece of the rock. Nice boat. <laughs> Powerful new financial help is coming. The Rock, the Prudential, is now more than insurance. It's mutual funds, home mortgages, IRAs, stocks and bonds, new products and new ideas. It's rock-solid financial help for us all. The Rock, the 
Prudential. It's strong, it's on the move, it's bigger than life. Tonight, number four, Michigan takes on Wisconsin, and the Wolverine coach, Bo Schimbeckler, is just one victory away from becoming only the eighth coach in major college history to win 200 games. It isn't Bo Schimbeckler. That's the misconception. You see, every season is different. People don't understand that. It isn't me. I mean, I, I just happen to be the coach. And, and championships are important to me because they have such a tremendous effect on the guys that play. That's the fun of it. In his 17 seasons at Michigan, Bo has won 10 conference championships. But no one's ever mistaken this for a good time. Bo is on the field. Bo Schembechler is going crazy. Schembechler is all the way out past the numbers. Early, Bo was just as tough on his own team as he was with officials. But he's been able to formulate lasting respect with his players, who can now look back at the old Bo and share a laugh. Bo Schembechler, when he got to Ann Arbor, contrary to what he says now, he was a maniac. Oh, God, he was tough on us. I used to make Dan come in under 250. He didn't like that. And if he didn't make 250, I put him on the track at 6.30 in the morning. So that's why he's calling me a maniac. If Bo has maniacal tendencies, he comes by them honestly. As a player at Miami of Ohio, he was a 190-pound tackle under Woody Hayes, a good and outspoken role model. Then when Hayes went to Ohio State and Schimbeckler to Michigan, the foundation was formed for a great rivalry among close friends who respect each other's volatile nature. I am proud of him. He's a wonderful man, and we're very close friends. And you know who likes him better than I do? My wife. And she says the three men that she likes most are Sherry Grant, uh, Thomas Jefferson, and Bo Schimbeckler. <laughs> Yeah, she's said that to me herself. <laughs> I think I'm a distant third. <laughs> Saturday afternoons at Michigan Stadium, there's no doubt that Bo Schimbeckler is the man in control, the man calling all of the shots. But it's a different story when he comes here to his home of 17 years. I run everything, every place I've ever been except at home. When I'm at home, I'm second string. I like it that way, too, because I'm sort of a take-charge person. And... Um, he, he never seems to do things to please me, you know, and I think that's deliberate, but it works. Though some people say a heart attack, open heart surgery, and age should slow Bo down. Don't try convincing his players he's taking it easy. I know a lot of people say that he's mellowed, but if he's mellowed, I would have hated to have seen him in the early 70s. The current players may not call this mellow, but take it from the coach, it is. I used to attack difficult situations with my fist, but I've uh, mellowed a little bit in that regard. But. My, my basic concepts and the things that I believe in, I don't think I've changed too much. All right, the latest now on that Nebraska game. South Carolina drove down to the 19 of the Cornhuskers. They've just thrown an interception. Brian Siebler picking it off for the Cornhuskers. Only 45 seconds to go. It looks good for Nebraska. Second half coming up, you've been watching the Prudential College Football Report on CBS. The Prudential College Football Report has been sponsored by The Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and other financial services. The Prudential, the rock, it's strong, it's on the move, it's bigger than light. Back in East Lansing, Michigan, with the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Michigan State Spartans tied at 14, as we are about ready to begin the second half. The Big Ten season underway, and... Era, I thought the key moment for the Hawkeyes was that fumble recovery on the kickoff after they scored. It certainly was a big play. James Moore, number 33, finally fielded the ball, but that squib kick that Iowa's using has been very difficult for him to handle. Now it is Keaton Smiley, number 44, who pounces on it, and one play later, they had their second touchdown. The quarterback, they are certainly a story in this game, and let's see how they perform statistically in the first half. It's bigger than light. Back in East Lansing, Michigan, with the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Michigan State Spartans tied at 14 as we are about ready to begin the second half. The Big Ten season underway, and Era, I thought the key moment for the Hawkeyes was that fumble recovery on the kickoff after they scored. It certainly was a big play as James Moore, number 33, finally fielded the ball, but that squib kick that Iowa's using has been very difficult for him to handle. Now it is 
Keaton Smiley, number 44, who pounces on it to one play later. They had their second touchdown. The quarterback, they are certainly a story in this game, and let's see how they perform statistically in the first half. Yurima was 11 of 16 for 156, two touchdowns and one interception, and surprise starter Tom Paholsky was 10 of 16 for 106 and one touchdown. Era is certainly another big story is Lorenzo White. A year ago in Iowa City, he had gained 88 yards at the half. Today, only 33. What's the difference, Ben? Well, I think they're committing the seven men to the front, to the defensive front, to stop Lorenzo. But they are giving up receivers that are open. And Yurima has taken advantage of that. As a matter of fact, both teams have had receivers open. But I think that oh, Iowa came in here with the idea of stopping Lorenzo Jones. Lynch White. And along with Jones, they're stopping the Whites and everybody else on that team right now. As we get ready here to start the second half. Michigan State and Iowa, they are tied at 14. We'll be back with that kickoff in a moment. You know, Ace is the place for some serious savings, like the October Best Buys in the Ace Monthly Circular, the Super Art Lawn Rakes, just $1.49, the Ames Kangaroo Lawn and Leaf Bag Cart, just $8.99. But Ace is also the place for savings on serious things, like the Code 1 Smoke Alarm with Safety Light, only $4.88 after a $5 rebate, and you can charge it. At that price, you can't afford not to protect your home and family. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware man. It's one thing to say you fight friction. It's another thing to prove it. Kendall Motor Oil did. First, ordinary piston rings were plated with pure gold. Then, a prestigious independent laboratory ran them under stop-and-go driving conditions for 5,000 miles. The results? Look, Kendall protected the soft gold. A remarkable test only Kendall has taken. Now, doesn't that tell you something? Kendall Motor Oil, for protection worth its weight in gold. What a bright future I have. I like Sylvania bulbs. Long-lasting bulbs for your home. All kinds of energy-saving lights. And look, Sylvania put me in spotlights, garden lights, and thousands of other bulbs. Try some. I'll do a brilliant job for you. Honey, who turned on all the lights? Ask for Sylvania, where the best comes to light. This is CBS. This is really a beautiful place to live and to play and to work and to raise a family. I found that the people here have a wholesomeness and a groundedness that you don't find in other parts of the country. I can't think of any place I would rather be raising my kids than right here in Waterloo. I'm a member of this community. I believe in this community. And even with its problems, this is where I'll stay. Hello, Iowa. Hello, Iowa. Come aboard the Norwegian Line's MS Starward for a KGA and Caribbean holiday. Enjoy an unforgettable week cruising the world's most beautiful seas with stops at exciting ports of call. Jamaica, Grand Cayman, and the exotic Mexican island of Cozumel. It's a wonderful getaway, January 17th through 24th, the KGA and Caribbean holiday. Call Tri-State Tours at Westdale Mall for your reservation. 800-255-2255, extension 8787, toll free in Iowa. CBS Sports presents College Football, sponsored by Toyota. More dependability, more quality, more satisfied owners who could ask for anything more. The people of Rockwell International, where science gets down to business. The people who make glass containers naturally. And by MCI, communications for the next hundred years. Injured Spartan fullback Bobby Morse, who normally wears number 21 and is Lorenzo White's premier blocker out of that backfield. A separated shoulder last week against Western Michigan. He will be ready for the Wolverines next week. But his absence is being felt in that backfield by the Spartans. They miss his blocking. He's such a great blocker, as you pointed out, Brent. And he had a great game two weeks ago. As a matter of fact, he's a steady performer. He, he, he mentioned during the course of the week how, how much he missed playing and practicing. 
Well, Hayden Fry doesn't miss seeing him, I'll tell you that. Although Hayden left a pretty good one home himself, and that is fullback David Hudson, one of the better running fullbacks in the country. He is out when he blew out a quadricep muscle running for a touchdown last Saturday. He was all alone, and his quarterback, Mark Vlasic, unable to go because of an injured shoulder. That's the total yards in the first half. Michigan State with 198 in Iowa with less. And in the passing, Tom Paholsky completed his first seven. He cooled off in the second quarter. In fairness to Paholsky, the field position was not there on several occasions. Iowa elected not to put it up. Iowa won the flip to start this game. Hayden Fry electing to defer. So Paholsky and the offense will go to work to start the second half. And Dave Urema will wait for his turn. Urema with two touchdown passes to England. And Paholsky with one to his tight end to flag. And fullback Bass scored the other one for the Hawkeyes. And we're even at 14. Montgomery has the ball teed up, and he'll kick it off. Now, keep in mind that the Hawkeyes are playing without the services of their Making great fullback, Hudson, David Number Hudson, and also Craig their starting quarterback, Montgomery. Mark Velasic, who's a five-year redshirt quarterback with a lot of experience. Ball is teed at the 35. I like these low kicks here this afternoon. Burt. Slowed up at the 20 and hammered down right there. Good coverage by that specialty team. It looked like Burt might have something going. Both teams quit kicking the ball, and they're very difficult to handle, as you pointed out. Well, that was number 48, Percy Snow, reserve middle linebacker, who led the coverage on that play. And Paholsky and the Hawkeyes will come out. First down, Iowa, at the 22. Boy, that's a Nebraska Cornhuskers pulled one out in the late going in that game. And the Irish get on the board. It's 14-7, Alabama with the lead. Here we're tied at 14. Baholski hands it off on first down. And Tim Moore, number 42, was right there to wrap up the tailback. Bayless may be injured. He is scooped over, and he is shaken up. Going back into the huddle now. Not sure that the bench has picked it up. But Bayless is shaken up. Tim Moore really did a job. Voided his block. He's 6'3", 219. Got a lot of penetration. Second They're stopping 11. the running game. Number Neither three. team has been able to develop a consistent running game here this afternoon. They split the backs, and Paholsky to throw it on second down. Here is Bayless. He breaks the tackle by Crum and gets to the 29-yard line, short of the first down. Shane Bulla, number 41, the middle linebacker, was over to make the tackle. 35, Crum misses him. He'd have thrown the ball a little quicker here, a little sooner. Probably would have gotten more yardage, but Crum is able to come off of his receiver, but he misses the tackle right there. Bayless gets a couple extra yards. This is third and four for the Hawkeyes. They come up behind that massive offensive line. You can see how close to the line of scrimmage Bayless is as he slips out as a pass receiver. And Paholsky hits him. Out of bounds on the far side. John Miller on the coverage. A first down for Iowa. They've been able to hit the, the back out of the backfield. Just a quick out. Both of them led the first downs. They've completed two of them now. Iowa. Marv Cook, 84, the tight end, looking back at the sideline as the play comes in with Richard Bass, the fullback. Now Cook goes back out. There is Ronnie Harmon's brother, number 28, just checked into the huddle. That is Kevin Harmon. Crum came out of there. It looks like a little injury and rose First in the ball game. From the Hawkeye, 38. So from the 38, it'll be first down. They'll run the draw, and that's Bass, the fullback. Gets out Richard close Bass, to midfield. Got a nice hole in there to run through. Good call, a draw play. Bass has done a nice job in there replacing Hudson. Watch the old opening right here for Bass. Number 23 gets the draw. Look at that nice blocking in there. Even Harmon, number 28, is leading through. Probably should have made more yardage on it. Number 45, Bergen comes off and slows him down. A measurement close to a 10-yard gain by Bass. Uh, first down. So they back up 10-yard gains 
And the Hawkeyes roll off two first downs for Hayden Fry and his offensive assistants. Coach Snyder upstairs helping out, sending the plays down. And Craig Clark, the tight end, delivers it to Paholsky. That pass looks really short from here. He's 5'9", but he's about 220 pounds. Hey, Arrow, that is short. <laughs> First down, and here he comes. Trying to get smart with me, huh? The rolling ball of knives. Isn't that what Hayden Fry calls him? As Joe Bergen gets in along with Altabelli. They stopped him that time. But he has got good speed and doing a nice job in there for Hudson, who's missing this ball game. That's why I'm not seeing the six foot eight inch quarterback. The fullback would have to jump up to get the handoff. <laughs> now I know why I'm not seeing that gun over there. Second down and eight. Quickly to the pocket. Down the middle. And he's got it. Jim Morrow for the six. You said in the first half that his receivers were open deep, Era. They were there. And it was a beautiful throw by Paholsky. They split the two deep zone that time just perfectly. We'll take a look at that after this extra point, but it was a marvelous job by the receiver as well as the passer. Now Jim Morrow on the receiving end of a 50-yard scoring strike by Tom Paholsky. That is his second touchdown pass of the afternoon. Outlet. Hammers in the extra point. Make it 21 to 14. The Hawkeyes lead it for the second time this season. You'll be able to see as this play unfolds here that they're in the two deep. I'm talking about the Spartans. Now watch Morrow split the two deep. Bobbitt is on the right. Number 39 can't catch up with him. 13 Altabelli can't catch him. Beautiful route by Morrow. Excellent work. A walk on and he can play. Last year the names were Happel and Helverson. They were the control receivers. Now it is 47. Still another walk on at Iowa who has picked up the slack and he scores the touchdown to put the Hawkeyes ahead. We're going to be right back. It's 21 14 Iowa. Those who have waited and waited can now see the light. For Toyota introduces a car close to perfection. The all-new 1987 Toyota Camry. Camry gets more power to pass from a new 16-valve fuel-efficient engine, a quiet, more comfortable cabin for five, and more of the Toyota quality that has made Camry the most trouble-free new car, domestic or import, sold in America. Open that more, anything more, Toyota. Balance. It is stability based on planned diversity. Rockwell International's continuous growth results from a balance of businesses. Outstanding performance in electronics, aerospace, automotive, industrial automation, and general industries. Rockwell International. Down-to-earth management and opportunities as limitless as space. Mike is branded cop killer. I admit I didn't like the guy. You hit him hard, and you're gonna pay. His only hope, a dead witness. The new Mike Hammer, tonight on CBS. Another big play for the Hawkeyes. And you'll see defensively how Morrow here has split the difference between Bobbitt there and Alcabelli there. He just runs right between the seam here. You'll see why he was so open. The two deep, a perfect route against it. There's the ball by Paholsky, who throws the ball as well as his dad, right on target. So Paholsky is 13 of 19 for 173 yards and two touchdowns here this afternoon. And number 14 is starting to feel more and more comfortable as a starting quarterback. How would you like to have the number one rated passer in the country out with a shoulder injury? A six foot eight inch freshman who's the rave because he throws two 50 yard bombs last week for touchdown. Now you get the guy who holds for your conversions, Tom Paholsky, out there, and he starts ripping 50 yards. <laughs> that was that was a beautifully executed play. Hayden Fry's got more depth at quarterback than two thirds of the NFL teams. 
Here comes Murphy, and what a day he's had as a kicker. And he's quivered. Oh, well, that's a successful kick. Greg Johnson. He's got an alley, and he's out beyond the 30 this time. John Speaking Smith. of professional football, NFL today, tomorrow at 12.30. Find out the Doug Flutie story. Is he headed for the Packers? How about the Bears? There's some interest, or will he play this year? John Elway, are the Broncos going to the Super Bowl? We're going to take a look at that at 12.30 Eastern, and Dick Vermeil will drop by and tell us. And then, of course, the key game coming up right after that will be Minnesota against Chicago. Many of you will see that. Washington Giants. How about Atlanta? Unbeaten, the Falcons are. And they've got Philadelphia tomorrow. And then a doubleheader game. Yurima, under pressure, number 97, Joe Mott. Taking him down. And the hot guys are around. Strong side end, put the pressure on. And that's the best pass defense in the world. That's a 10 yard loss on that sack by Mott. Joe is out of Endicott, New York. Out of Union High School there. And George Perlis' staff runs in a play from the sideline. Learned how to play his position well. He was a great defensive end in high school. And on this second and 25 defensive back shown by the Hawkeyes. Ingram, who's caught two TDs, comes in motion. Yurima down the middle toward Ingram. Ingram can't hold on. You'll see Ingram that'll come in motion. We'll take a look right here. He'll come in motion, come right up the field, the same play that they used against Notre Dame for a touchdown. He'll split the two deep zone again. His speed, watch right here, he turns right in the middle, the ball is right off his fingertips. Right there, could have been a big play. Third down and 20 for the Spartans. They trail 21-14. Now they botched the snap. They put it on the carpet. Now John Breeze is in there quickly along with Yurima. Couldn't tell what happened, whether it was Shermer's snap or whether Yurima pulled away. That's unusual to have an exchange problem. Aiden Fry's Hawks will get it in good field position, although Montgomery is a boomer. He's standing back inside his five-yard line. Marciano, the deep man. Just got nine coming. Oh, Drives Marciano inside the 25. Gets to the outside. Knocked out of bounds on that far sideline. Paul Bobbitt. A 59-yard kick. And Rocky Marciano's nephew brings it back 18 yards. We got timeout. Pure natural glass. Protects the goodness and taste you want for your baby. And with recyclable glass, you can see that the good things that come in glass come just as their maker intended. Brought to you by the people who make glass containers. Naturally. Day after day, short trips can clog your fuel injectors or carburetor. But with Phillips 66 Super Clean Unleaded Gasolines, as little as one tank full can clean your engine to run like new. Super Clean Unleaded Gasolines from Phillips 66. Sure, I still use my old gas card. Especially since I learned that cash and credit are the same low price at Phillips 66. Phillips 66. Cash or credit. Same low price. You begin with raw steel. Shape it with fire, muscle, and sweat. Polish it to razor sharp perfection. We're looking for a few good men with a medal to be Marines. 
It's time to present this week's Toyota Leadership Award to players who've been singled out by their school's coaching and faculty staff for outstanding performance in the areas of team contributions, academics, and citizenship. Today's game team leadership winners are Mark Vlasic from Iowa. He's a senior finance major, a three-point grade point average from Manaka, Pennsylvania. And Dean Altabelli from Michigan State. He's a senior mechanical engineering major, a 3.94 grade point average from Escanaba, Michigan. And Toyota will donate a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. And congratulations to both of those fine young men. Paholsky, under pressure, goes down 39-yard line. Had a foul up in the backfield that time. Paholsky wasn't sure who he was going to give it to. Back went the wrong way. You'll see right here from a ground level, he comes back. Looks like he wants to give the draw, and he's on the wrong side. Bass is over on the right. He says, hey, wait a minute, I've got to run this draw. Paholsky is a sophomore out of St. Louis, Missouri. He was all conference back there and the most valuable player, and he passed for 1,000 yards, including 280 in a state semifinal game. Split coming hard. They're picked up. He had time, and it's complete tomorrow, who is run out of bounds on the near sideline inside the 45-yard line. Michigan State tried that time to get to Paholsky. They get maximum blocking. Eight men stay in block right there, pick up all the blitzers. Look at how isolated Crum is out here one-on-one. -on -one. And he doesn't dare give him too much. Oh, boy, what a job. This offensive line is doing the job, too. What a pocket they form around him. Bob Kratz, the right guard out of Mawa, New Jersey, who paved the way for that touchdown pass, number 70. 56, Mark Sendlinger, the center, and 74, Chris Gamble, the left guard. The left guard. Boy, nice job by the offensive line and back picking up the blitz. On the first down, Paholsky, penalty marker is down. He throws to Kevin Harmon. There's a penalty mark. I think 70, right guard Cratch held Nichols. He's having a tough time with him. I think it's going to be a holding penalty. Yep, he got him. Nichols was held on the play by Cratch number 70. Now, Cratch picked up Nichols on that long 50-yard bomb. This time, he picked him up a little bit too well. Now, uh, from number 35, a defensive right corner has been limping some. And you'll see the possibility that Iowa is going to go after him over here. He was hurt, came out, and then uh, looked like he was limping a little bit. Here it is right here. You get the little stuck right there. Wolf comes to the outside. There's Nichols. I guess maybe it was Sindlinger that got the holding. Yeah, Sindlinger. It's number 56. Yep, here's another shot at it right here. I see Sindlinger right out there with his right arm holding on right there. You see a great shot of it. A referee made the call. You see him reaching for his flag right there in the right corner. 21-7. Oh Whoops. Back up by two. And on this first down, they run the draw with Bass. Ryan to find daylight, but Nichols and Wolf will Bass. not let him get it. Number 83, Mark Nichols is out of Bloomfield Michigan State, Hills, Michigan. Went to Birmingham Dave Brother Wolf. Ice like several of these Wolf. outstanding players on this team. Well, he's got good quickness and movement. Kirk Gibson likes to help George Perlis recruit some of those stars. Todd Crum was one who Kirk made an appearance on behalf of his school. Great baseball player with the Tigers. He follows the Spartans. He's probably watching this game back in Baltimore. Second and 21. Baholski down the middle. Overthrows. Intercepted. That's Paul Bobbitt. side is out of bounds near the 30-yard line. Brian, I think Bobby Smith ran the wrong route. He started up the field, and instead of splitting the two deep, he stayed to the outside. Paholsky anticipating Smith's movement into the middle, where he probably should have been against this coverage. Let's take a look from the end zone here. Bobby Smith is out to your right. You don't see him right now. Now, you'll see Paholsky delivers the ball right down the middle between the two deep, looking for Smith, who is supposed to be there. Smith is off in the right corner, coming to the picture now. I think Smith broke the pattern. Bobbitt got back to the 30, where it's first down. 8.29 to go on the third. Michigan State trailing it by seven. Yurima on first down, gets away from Mott. Throws complete to Ingram. Ingram inside the 50. Ingram inside the 40. And 
Bruce Gear, 94, finally from behind. There is a penalty marker down back near the line of scrimmage. A 32-yard gain, but hold on. That could be offensive pass interference it against is. the Spartans. They're pushing. Apparently one of the receivers pushed off. Didn't, we didn't see it from this right at the top when the uh, Yarimu was scrambling out. But that is a big, big penalty against the Spartans because they were down in good field position. There it is. Ball marked. We have offensive 15. pass interference. The dissolves locks it down. Field. We'll have second down. Let's take a look at the play. Now. See if you see can, we can pick it up. Let's see who it is they called it on. He rolls out. We can't see. This is Urema rolling. Escapes Mott. No, we can't see. I can't see it. Don't know who the call it was. It was on. the receiver underneath Ingram. Coming across, Era. He was behind a defender and he simply shoved it. Whoever was working in underneath committed the foul. Cost them 45 yards in any of that. And a down. Second and 25. They're in the draw. Lorenzo White oh. not going to get any daylight that time. George Davis, 37 and 5. Mike Burke closed the door. Iowa with the lead here. Meanwhile, Jim Nance, what's going on back in New York? Well, Brent, Florida has lost to LSU today. The final was 28 to 17, but even worse for the Gators, they lost their fine quarterback, Kerwin Bell, with a knee injury. The word now, ligament damage, no tear, but Bell will be out four to six weeks, and the Gators have dropped to one and four. Let's go back to Brent and Aaron. And they have lost those games, I think three of them, down in Gainesville, which is not like the Gators. They're generally very tough at home. Third and 25, Urema gonna come long toward Ingram. Intercepted by Sims. Sims is at the 40. And he goes down at the 43. Era Ingram held up for a moment on his pattern and then accelerated. We saw Urema laid it out as far as he could throw it. It was overthrown. Sims, the only returning starter in that secondary, made the great interception. They had such long yardage to go. Watch Urema really stretch out. This is as far as he can throw that football. And of course, it's overthrown. And Sims has got it for the interception. But in that situation, it's almost as good as a punt. We'll be right back. Manage handle or direct with skill. Rockwell International Management stimulates the work of its 120,000 employees, one in six a scientist or engineer. Their elegant solutions to customer needs make Rockwell a world leader. Rockwell International. Managing high technology for global markets. You know, the weirdest things happen to me, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. I mean, here I am, stocking up for Halloween. I got my steak, got my ribs. Then when I ask the stock boy where the Coors Light is at, he points me to the Coors and Coors Light Halloween display, and I'm on it. <laughs> Whoa, it's like deja vu. Whoa, it's like deja vu. <laughs> Look for it where you buy beer. I shop here because they slash prices. <laughs> there goes another one. Happy Halloween, darling. Tomorrow, Herschel Walker and the Cowboys are going to taste Denver's deadly orange crush. Double header action starts with the NFL Today on CBS Sports. Well, Era has talked a lot about stunting and looping, and we asked Mark Nichols what they're trying to accomplish in the defensive line. Well, basically, it's uh, the ability for one guy to take it, to use up two guys in order to free the other one to make the play. It's similar to a pick situation in basketball. And what we try and do is uh, I'll, I'll pick the center, and uh, so Dave will come around and use up the guard and the center, and he'll be free. And here they are, Era. Here's, you see the stunt. You see Nichols going into the center, drawing the block of the right guard and center. Wolf coming underneath and putting the pressure on the passer. And if you've watched NFL games the last 10 years, you're familiar with that. Mean Joe Green slamming in there for that slant. George Perlis, the defensive line coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, brought that defense here to Michigan State. But 
The Hawkeyes have hit that defense for 91 yards this quarter. And they lead 21 to 14. Kevin Harmon running under control. Got it out to the 49-yard line. He has been slowed a bit by injuries here in the early going. And so Bayless was the heavy-duty tailback. But there is Ronnie Harmon's younger brother out of Laurelton, New York. That's one of the few times uh, in this ball game that Iowa has tried to get outside on a pitch sweep. Excuse me. Been doing most of the stuff on the inside. Second and four. And now with Harmon in the game, they loosen up that formation considerably. They toss the Harmon. Jitterbug outside. And he got a first down for the Hawkeyes. Tim Moore and Rob Stradley, number 22 make the stop. Good job of running. I think there's a good job of coaching going on, too. Aiden Fry used a very conservative approach in the first half. Used Bayless at the tail. Now he has switched here to Harmon up by 7, 6, 17. A different look from those formations. The Michigan State and defensive coaches, Nick Saban, the coordinator, they must now rethink their strategy as the Hawkeyes come down to the 44. They run fast the fullback. They don't rethink that time. They just turned it loose. No chance on that draw. <laughs> That's the best defense in the world. <laughs> right. Meet you at the ball. Let's go get them. Well, they've, they've had trouble consistently getting to Paholsky in their pass rush. Receivers have been open, and certainly this is a passing down. Second and ten, ten and a half. Meanwhile, over there in the bullpen, six foot, eight inches a quarterback. Dan McGuire. I guess I'm going to be sorely disappointed if I don't see him <laughs> throw this afternoon. Washington up over California and Arizona State leading UCLA. Arizona State has never beaten UCLA. Got a chance this afternoon. Second and 11 and there's confusion there. And timeout is called by Iowa. So we'll take a break at the 518 mark. Iowa leads Michigan State 21 to 14. A new star show. We're MCI. We can go one-on-one -on -one with anyone in the communications business, no matter how big they are. MCI competes with a full range of data communication services for reliable transmission around the corner or around the world. Our competition is good. We have to be better. And because we compete, you win. MCI, communications for the next hundred years. Introducing the all-new Toyota Tercel for 1987. Simply more bang for the buck. Tercel for 87, Toyota's lowest price car. Now gives you explosive new styling. More power to pass with a new 12-valve fuel-efficient engine. And quality that has made Toyota Tercel more trouble-free than any other new car sold in its class. Drive it. You'll get a bang out of it. A TV star finds eternal youth on sale. How much do I owe you? Don't ask. In The Twilight Zone, tonight on CBS. Here in Spartan Stadium, along with Eric Parsegan, I'm Brent Musburger, 5.18 to go in the third, and Iowa leading Michigan State 21-14. And while we've got an opportunity, Era, we want to send along our best wishes to our executive producer of golf here on CBS, Frank Cherkinian, who is recovering from heart surgery down at his home in Georgia. And I know Frank is watching this game if the doctors will let him. He's a great football fan. And Frank, get better. We want to see you on the first tee here in a couple of months. Second down and 11 for the Hawkeyes. The ball is at the 45 of Michigan State. The Holtzke. In trouble. And John Buddy, number 87. I think Paholsky thought he read the coverage, called an audible at the line, but I think he misread it because the Spartans were in good coverage, had most of the receivers pretty well covered that time, and the rush got to him. Devin Harberts, along with some of the other wide receivers, have been bringing in plays. Tight end Mike Flagg will carry that one in. Nick Saban, the defensive coordinator for the Spartans, does not like to put the defensive secondary of the, this Michigan State team in man-to-man -man coverage. They're great on zone to react to the ball well, but they're not good on one-on-one. -on -one. It looks like they're doubling on the wide receivers now. Iowa 
was five of nine on third downs. They dropped the screen off. Make it five of ten as Tim Moore, number 42, stops the Hawks short of the first down at the four ten mark. Oski's pass complete. He got you got a double tight end here. Pass tackled by 75. When they bring the uh, fullback out of this formation, well, it, it was a good call on the part. The fullback slips out to the right, and you see Paholski fake the sweep, then turn back and screen to him right there. There's the throw. There's the screen set up in front of him, and he's short of a first down. They punt the ball. Goes into the end zone. It'll come out. It'll come out on the 20. 38 yards from the 20. Now, era. The longest run from scrimmage today by either team is 12 yards by Bass on his Iowa touchdown. So the Hawkeyes have done a job defensively on Lorenzo White. Is there anything that you have seen up here that you think they should try with White? Well, I, I believe that the Hawkeyes have committed seven men. When I'm talking about seven men, that five-man front as well as the linebackers, and they want to stop White. They think White can beat them. But there's been open receivers. You've got to give a little something. And they have given some yards to Yurima on passing. There's the screen back at him, but the ball's deflected. So they went screen white that time. And John Breeze, 57, led the defensive assault. Oh, Breeze got a hand on that ball, didn't he? And watching is the injured fullback, Bobby Morse. Michigan State this afternoon. What's their passing rushing breakdown? Well, it's just got 29 yards. I mean, this is a remarkable job by the Hawkeyes rushing and 156 passing. And second and 10, and they'll toss that ball to White. And he's run out of bounds by Kyle Crow, the free safety, number 18 Michigan on the far side. Lorenzo White. What a difference a year makes defensively against Lorenzo White by the Hawkeyes. Smiley. After 24 games, Lorenzo White is one of the best of all time. Only four have done better. Dorsett and White are on the same pace. But number 25 has been tough for White. He has carried 17 times for 39 yards this afternoon. Doggone good job by the Hawkeye defense. Here is third and four. Penalty marker is down. Ingram had gone in motion. They hit Risen. Now that would be a first down, but there's a penalty marker down. Let's see if Risen moved too quickly. He was in motion. Yeah. That's what happened. Michigan State. He thought he was playing for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Five yard penalty. No, the Canadian rules don't work here. And that's another penalty that has been very costly. The, the one long pass. It brought it back because there was an offensive pass interference of 45 yards. This would have given them a first down. They're going to be third down in about eight or nine, Brent. Rima comes back from the sideline. Pugh has replaced Morse at fullback here this afternoon. Motion, illegal motion on the offense. Still third down. 39 from the 21. Ingram is split out to Yurima's right. Rising to the left. The tight end is in motion. Under pressure, he will not escape. That was Joe Mott, 97. Oh, he's made some big plays for the Hawks. He really has. He's really putting the pressure on the passer. Tackled by 52. You can't overemphasize how important the first game of a conference also season is. What it does for morale. Sets a positive State, attitude. Montgomery. They're going into that Marciano, seven or eight game conference schedule. Every week they're playing a conference team. They want to be they want to be the champions. They want the Rose Bowl. But you'd like to win that first one. Montgomery has averaged better than 50 yards a punt here this afternoon on three punts. He's standing inside his tent. A Whoa. low bouncer on the carpet. Marciano's got it. Whoa. There's an alley. Pounds his way down inside that 35. It was a low punt, and Marciano made him pay the price. 46-yard punt and a 27-yard return. 
Excellent return here by Marciano. I thought he might get the wall down the side. He cuts it back to the inside here. And fakes out. I can't quite bob it. Number 39. Before he's finally driven out of bounds right there. By Alta, Alta Belli came in and make a good play. Number 13. Iowa first down. Have the Michigan State. So the Hawkeyes with a scoring opportunity here at the 40. They lead it by seven. 21 14. 233 to go in the third. Paholski off a fake. Hands back inside on first down. They had one running back behind Paholski. Iowa ball carrier, 23 Richard Bass. And Bass, the fullback, took it. Next week, it'll be Michigan State against Michigan. 2.30 Eastern time here on CBS. The fullback took it. Next week, it'll be Michigan State against Michigan. 2.30 Eastern time here on CBS. Bo Schimbeckler may be going for 2.01. He goes after number 200 tonight against Wisconsin. And Michigan State would like to be coming off a win, but they've got their hands full here with the Hawkeyes. The Hawkeyes had three players drafted on the first round by the NFL. And they have filled those spots nicely. Now they go with three wide receivers, a tight end, and a fullback Bass who gets the call. And Bass pounds his way for the first down to the 25. Great run by the fullback who has scored once here this afternoon. Boy, he's strong. Looked like he was stopped at the line of scrimmage. Shook a couple of tacklers and goes for a first down. He's carried nine times this afternoon for 42 yards. Chris Gamble, the left guard, number 74, will pull for a trap on the inside. Oh, nice job of running there. Now watch him spin off right here and get additional yardage. He's doing a nice job in replacing David Hudson. Like Larry Station. Bass is out of Omaha, Nebraska. Set in front of the tailback with a first down for the Hawkeyes. And here is Kevin Harmon shooting back to the right. He's cut off. Shane Bullock. Number 41 was in defensively for the Spartans. After the three-yard loss. Doesn't matter who coaches Penn, they come up with a win in the Ivy League. We've got 55 seconds left here in East Lansing, Michigan. As the Tar Heels stay unbeaten. And Virginia comes back over pesky Wake Forest. From the state. Virginia Tech comes up with a strong defensive effort. Goes quickly to Maul on the right. Steps out of bounds at the 21-yard line. There should have been a five-yard penalty on that. The backs were not set for a full second before the ball was down. That would be the first penalty they've missed on the Hawkeyes today. <laughs> Iowa has been penalized all game here this afternoon. Seven times for 67 yards. This will be third down and almost six. Baholski brings him to the line. Bass and Harmon are his setbacks. Great time. What protection. Deflected incomplete. Oh, they could have delivered him a cup of tea and a crump at that time. Well, that was a great job by Spradley. He tipped that ball. Number 22, the middle linebacker. Watch 22 come into your picture here and just deflect the ball before it's going to be a completion. Mahalski puts it right there. Watch Spradley come right into your right side. Number 22 right there. Deflect the ball so that Harmon can't get it. Nice job. Well, it'll be a 37-yard field goal attempt by Houghton. Michigan State ball. Rob Spradley gets in and blocks that field goal. The middle linebacker out of Hartville, Ohio. A quarterback in high school. 4-7-40. Play defensive back also. Two big plays in a row. The Spartans with a fresh life. 23 to go in the third. Watch Stradley, 22, come in. Gets high in the air. Pats it down with both arms. You can watch him extend. Miller pounces on it. And Yurima comes back to work again. It's been tough going. Here's that toss to Lorenzo White. He is cut off and going nowhere. White. Jeff Ross, 76, wraps him up. They last year... Michigan State really hurt the Hawkeyes going to the Angle short side of the field. You think they're not ready for it? They have shut that off all afternoon. 
I think they got to go to the air with Urena, Ryzen, and Ingram. That's their strong suit. As time runs out on the third quarter, Iowa. We were tied at the half, and then the Hawkeyes came out and scored on a 50-yard bomb. It was Paholski tomorrow. 15 minutes to go. We'll be right back after this message and a word from your local state command. Toyota, builders of tough, powerful, reliable trucks. Toyota. And by the U.S. Navy. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. The heat is on, Dave Urema and the Michigan State offense in that third quarter. Iowa rolled up 130 yards and held the Spartans to minus four. Renzo White on the end around. Ingram took the handoff, and there's daylight. Across midfield to the 47, a well-executed play against that defense that is so conscious of Lorenzo White. Great, great call. First play of the fourth period. You'll see Lorenzo White will get the pitch right out here and then hand it back to Ingram as he comes back. Urema deals the ball off. Now watch the wall set up as Urema sets the wall as well. A great, great setup right here. Urema's leading number 14. Number one down there, Andre Risen. If he stays with that block, it could have been a bigger one. And Mark Hill, 53. Now Urema on first down, complete inside the 40-yard line. He hit on the far side. He went to Willie Boyer. Let's take a look at the end of that end around. Look at 53 and Ryzen, number one, also stuck a helmet in there. And that seemed to fire up the offense. Now, another first down after that 11-yard game. And the ball is down on the 35. Ball of the Iowa, 36. So that is the first first downs of this half for the Spartans. Now the toss for the Lorenzo. They loosened up. Oh, no, great no, tackle. Like Burke. Terry Burke, the strong safety, came up. Great job, Boy, Brent. Boy, did he do a job there. Terry Burke. Terry Burke. Recruited as a wing back when he came to Iowa, moved back to that strong safety spot. Era, the way they're pursuing White, you got to believe that that end around would work again. Boy, it looked like he was going to get some daylight down that sideline, but Burke saved at number three. What a job he did. Ingram getting 23 yards out of that initial into round. That's their best running game of the game. Iowa's defense has to hurry. They're making a late substitution. They get him off. Second and nine. Ingram in motion going down the right side. They want Bison. In zone. And complete. Ken Sims battling Andre Risen down to the corner. There's a penalty marker back at the line of scrimmage. It might be holding. Michigan State. Boy, they've had a lot of penalties in this second half. On that play for Iowa. Michigan State had the ball down to the 36. Did he get one-on-one -on -one over there on that side, era again that time? Yes, he did. As you'll see the motion right here. He'll come, come in motion. Let's take a look now as Yurima tries to hit the deep as he goes post-pattern. They'll go to the post. Michigan State. Right there it is. They're trying to. It's Sims one on one, but Sims is right there doing a nice job on coverage. Almost intercepts the ball. Andre, right there, Sims almost had it. This makes it second and 19. The ball is back at the Iowa 45. Yurima under pressure. Throws that might be intentional grounding. He was in the grasp and headed down when he threw that ball. That was Steve Thomas, 52. I think he's being overruled now. The referee called and he said he was in the grasp. He's waving off the play. No play. Now there's a referee that says I'm wrong. And, <laughs> and <laughs> you're enough, overruled by the sideline. We've got enough here this yeah. afternoon, folks. No more of that. He was right. in the grasp. It was the proper call, I think. You'll see that he's pretty well stopped right here. Rima tackled at the Michigan State. Era, this Steve Thomas, this backup nose guard out of Lincoln, Nebraska, this senior, who's 6'1", 270, he made some big plays down in the middle of that defense for Hayden Fry. He has done a good job. I think the uh, Hawkeyes have done an excellent job of rebuilding. They lost some good football players. Station and Hayden. Uh, 
a number of outstanding, talented defensive players. Jarima pulls straight back. He hits right oh, one. Down he goes in a hurry. Smiley comes up and levels. Boy, that's the way to play that screen. Smiley comes in there. You know what his nickname is? The Hitman. How you like and that? And did he do it there? Would you give him four stars and a coaching oh, film? You got it. Six foot, 175. Out of that's Duncanville, the way to play Texas. That. How what? the horns ever let him get away? <laughs> I'll tell you, he came up and played that screen beautifully. Now it'll be Montgomery again. We're in the fourth quarter. It's 21 14. The Hawkeyes lead the Spartans. And there's Marciano. He delivered one blow the last time out. James Ward. Oh. High and deep, and Marciano will let this one roll on into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Tom Paholsky and the Hawkeyes will come back at the 20, and we'll return in a moment. This is the dawn of a new day for the station wagon. Introducing the all-new 1987 Toyota Camry wagon. Camry now combines the wide-open spaces of a wagon, the passing power of a new 16-bow fuel-efficient engine, and the Toyota quality that has made Camry the most trouble-free new car, domestic or import, sold in America. Warm is what a gas home is all about. And if you're beyond natural gas service, enjoy the efficiency of gas by using propane. Nothing warms you like gas. Tomorrow, Herschel Walker and the Cowboys are going to taste Denver's deadly orange crush. Double header action starts with the NFL today on CBS Sports. Minnesota, there is Lorenzo White and medical staff taking a look at that left knee. Here is the play. Yarima dropped the pass off on the screen. Smiley read the play perfectly, came up low, and delivered the blow on that side. And Lorenzo White, shaken up, is over there on the bench. He has been held to 41 yards and 19 carries. Paholsky brings the Hawkeyes to the line of scrimmage. They are up by seven. He checks off at the line. He'll put it up on first down. No, he will not, because the Spartans will not let him. And Rob Stradley, number 22, he's blocked the field goal. He has contributed several key plays. Deflected what would have could have been a, a big pass completion down near about the five-yard line. And now he makes a sack. Third sack for the Spartans. Paholsky has thrown two touchdowns against the Spartan defense and only one interception. Now 11.37 to go. With Bama still ahead of Notre Dame. This is second and 18, and they run Bass, who is tripped up. And he is short of the original line of scrimmage. Mark, Mark Nichols, Nichols gets credit for that tackle. Well, he's got to come back and go on this third down play here. I just, I think I heard Hayden. That's exactly what he said, Coach. Back, and, back go. and go. Maybe, maybe going for the big one here instead of the first down. Going to fake the comeback and then turn up field. Let's see what happens here. Third and 13. He's got Smith out there along with Morrow. Double tight end. One running back. They're coming up on top. He fell down on the far side. Oh. Down he goes. Incomplete pass. Joe Bergen, number 45, slammed into him. Did the receiver slip there? Yes, he happened? slipped. He, he, went, he ran the out pattern and then tried to turn up and slipped and fell, and there was no one to throw to. Now, they've ruled it an incomplete pass. The crowd is booing because they thought it should have been a sack back there. But nevertheless, it's going to be fourth down, and it will be the Spartans' ball. Now, Alta Belli 
to return this punt by Costabala. Uh oh, there goes the flag. Alta Belli on the chase. He got off a of beauty. Roughing. It'll roll inside the 15 yard line. A 67 yard punt by Costabala. But the penalty marker down. Take a look at this, coach. That was a judgment on the part of the intended blocker. It is definitely roughing. He lays out right there and takes the punter down. Automatic first down, too. Yeah, if you've got to protect your punter in that situation, you get a broken leg. You bet. Proper call. Well, a roughing, the roughing the punter. And the Hawkeyes roughing the kicker on the ball defense. at the 33 with the first down. First down, Iowa. Hey, Eric, turn the lights on. It's getting a little dark here. <laughs> Listen, I stopped the rain for you earlier. What else do you want today? Well, can't you make lights I mean, up here in this stadium? <laughs> the place is getting as dark as Wrigley Field. <laughs> it is. It's dark. <laughs> in fact, I think there are more lights at Wrigley Field, come to think of it. 10-33, 21-14. Iowa with the ball in the lead. Penalties very costly to the Spartans in the second half particularly. behind the right side of that huge offensive line. They make Tim Moore, the linebacker, Bayless, make the stop Tim on Moore. Bayless. But a good run by the halfback. He squeezes seven yards out of that hole. Here I am terribly impressed with this Iowa offensive line. They're as big and as active as that bunch we saw down in Miami last week. Well, you got Croston back, number 61, a great one, and Cratch played an awful lot last year. Mike Flagg, the tight end, is a great one. Sindlinger, three-year starter. Oh. That time they didn't do so well, did they, folks? You must have heard me flagging on him. I think I was Bergen again, wasn't it? Yeah, he's had a fine game. Number 45 stepped in there for injured Shemansky, and he's really played exceptionally number the last two ball games. Dresses like somebody out of Auburn Davis, or Alabama. That's that naval look. Bergen. 45 on the We're in Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan. 9.30 to go here. It is 21-14 as the Big Ten campaign opens and last year's champions, the Iowa Hawkeyes, lead the Spartans by a touchdown. Big down for the Spartans here if they want to get that ball back with 9.18 left. Kaholski and Got a diving catch that time by Smith. Inside the 50-yard line, the ball was poorly thrown, and Robert Smith dove back to make the grab and keep the drive going here for the Hawkeyes at the nine-minute mark. A key catch. A very nice curl hook right here. Very great. The ball is thrown low. This is an unusual guy, this Bobby Smith. He's the kind of guy that did not avoid spring practice. He skipped track. Now watch this offensive line. Big Herb Wester, he's 6'8 out of New Hampshire. Cratch, 6'4 out of New Jersey. There's Sendlinger out of Iowa. Gamble's out of Michigan. Croston's out of Iowa. 8.45. Back comes Paholski over the middle to the tight end. Inside the 25-yard line, he hits Marv Cook. 6'4", 232. They've got three outstanding tight ends on this Iowa team. Flag, Cook, and Clark. That is 23 more passing yards for Tom Paholski. It gets right into the scene, but the ball is thrown perfectly by Paholski. Look at this. A nice catch again. I'm impressed with the tight ends of this Iowa ball club. They've always seemed to come up with them. They have used three on a lot of formations here this afternoon. And on first and ten, they run Bass to fullback. Oh. He is jammed up at that line of scrimmage. Nicholas led Richard the charge. Bass, the ball carrier. It's Come on, D! You can see here, right here, is the, the seams between these defenders here in the zone. They're splitting those and they're running perfect routes. You can see the receiver here that is open. He's going to be open with the perfect throw. Here he's open. This is what you call when they, you see the seams between the zone defenders, the linebackers and the deep secondary. Maholsky may try to find one here again, Harris. Second and 10, and whistle sounds for the timeout, and that's the second timeout 
that Caden Fry Iowa. was used. Timeouts got the one second. left. We'll be right back at the 738 mark. It's 21-14 Hawkeye. To break free. To reach new heights. To accept the challenge. To master a more demanding world. Feel the pride. Show the world your U.S. Navy. Live the adventure. Call 1-800-327-NAVY. When it comes to painting, it's very important to end up in the right place. True Value Hardware Stores. That's where you'll find the Wagner Power Roller Kit for just $74.99. And Maco Liquid Nails Construction Adhesive for only $1.19. This sturdy, rich, six-foot wood step ladder is only $16.88. And Red Devil Lifetime Siliconized Cough for just $1.50 is free after your $1.50 mail-in rebate coupon from most True Value Hardware Stores and Home Center. Today's small cars are tougher than ever on oil. Their high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to break down in oil immediately. That's why there's Castrol, the only leading motor oil that in every grade provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol before your engine does something to get you heated up. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. Well, there have been some great moments in this series and also some others around the Big Ten. Do you remember 1984, Illinois, and Ohio State? The Illini were all over the Buckeyes until Keith Byers ran right out of his shoes. He turned it loose for the Buckeyes. Scored the touchdown that started them on the comeback trail. It was 24-7, and Byers had a promise for our cameraman. We're coming back. And indeed they were coming back all the way with darkness closing in in Columbus. It was Byers swinging to the outside and scoring the touchdown that gave the Buckeyes the victory over the fighting Illini. And now this afternoon, those same two teams hooked it up in Columbus and the Buckeyes came through 14 the final score. Well, the Buckeyes win three in a row at home. Oh, Fast just rolled out of that tackle and got to the outside. How'd that little Don Nottingham type player bust that tackle? Look, and that was John Buddy that I think that he avoided. I mean, that's from a family that knows how to play the game. I mean, Buddy's father's been teaching him how to tackle and block since he was a little one. You know, and that little guy just rolled right out. John Madden is like that little guy. Yeah. Here it is, third down and ten. Look at that, Arrow. That's unbelievable in the second half. What a job that Iowa defense has done. Incredible. Third and ten. Baholski moving fast, and that's it. They run out of timeouts with 6.56 to go. Ooh, that could be trouble. Mm, the Hawkeye. Use their last time out, and Hayden is very upset with his offensive coordinators. In no uncertain terms, he says, We wasted a timeout, and we should not have. Balance. It is stability based on planned diversity. Rockwell International's continuous growth results from a balance of businesses. Outstanding performance in electronics, aerospace, automotive, industrial automation, and general industries. Rockwell International, down-to-earth management and opportunities as limitless as space. For every man who wears Brute deodorant, there's a woman who'll be glad he did. Because a man who wears Brute deodorant is nice to be close to. And nobody knows that better than a woman. Only Brute deodorant gives you long-lasting protection with the great smell of Brute. Hello. Brute deodorant, cologne, and everything else. Brute, it smells like a man. Great. Designing women on beauty contests. I saw some sort of breath of 
marathon at the Olympics. Fair Designing Women. Uh -huh. Monday on CBS. Era of this final 656 will have a lot of meaning for our video man, Red Berry. He has been at CBS for 36 years, starting in 1950 with the Steve Allen Show. This is his last event for CBS. He's retiring. Congratulations to Red Berry. And let's close out with a great one for him. As we've got a third and ten, the Hawkeyes have exhausted their timeouts. And now the official asks for one because there's too much noise for the whole speed. Well, we'll try to get them quieted down so they can hear their signals. We'll try again. But you're going to hear the same noise again. Third and ten. We've got 6.56 to go. Iowa leading Michigan State 21 to 14. Game was tied at 14 at the half. The Hawkeyes have dominated the second half, but they've only been able to score one time. They had a field goal block. Here is third and ten. Looks like their man-to-man -man coverage. Michigan State. Kaholski throws it up the middle. Incomplete. They wanted Smith. Oh, oh. That was Ron Rowe, the nickelback, the number 18. They don't like to go man to man, but they felt they had to here, and they put the blitz on. They come right in here. You see the blitz coming, and Bobby Smith is isolated one on one. Paholsky does have just enough time to unload it, and right there you see Rowe step in close to interference there. Looked like he might have made contact just before the ball was there, but. No one's complaining, so it must not have been. A big 42-yard field goal attempt by Halpin. It is good. Big kick, big kick. Rob Halpin, who last year delivered the biggest kick of the season for Iowa against Michigan. And that confrontation in Iowa City nails a critical one here at the 6.45 mark, and now it's a 10-point lead by the Hawkeyes. Era, the biggest play of this game may have been roughing that kicker. It was a big, big, big penalty against the Spartans. And they know when they get that 10th point on, it's going to take two scores to tie them or beat them. And you can see Iowa likes what they see. Hoffman likes it. He kicked it. He knows it's good. Spradley's not blocking that one. So the Hawkeyes on the road with a 10-point lead over Michigan State. A very important game for both of these teams. For Iowa, it starts them on the right track, perhaps back to a Rose Bowl after losing Chuck Long to the Detroit Lions, Ronnie Harmon to the Buffalo Bills, and Big Mike Haight to the New York Jets. He's been on the injured reserve. He's due to come off this week and join Joe Walton's Jet team. Hotland's the guy that also beat Michigan last year and also beat Purdue in the last 27 seconds in one game and the last minute and six in another. He's there's, made big kicks. There's our lineup for tomorrow. Most of you will see Minnesota against Chicago. And then our doubleheader game. And it's a dandy. If you haven't seen the Denver Broncos yet, check them out tomorrow. They get a chance to go all the way this year. Winder and Wilhite are running very hard. And folks have criticized that running game out in Denver. And I'm here to tell you, they looked good last week in some big moments against New England. 24-14 here. It is Iowa that has looked good in all the big moments in the second half. Murphy to kick it off. Bobbled at the 12 by Johnson. And it goes and almost got three out to the 39. George Davis, number 37. The kickoff for Michigan State. Gets credit. Now, Johnson is staying on the field arrow, which would indicate that White will not return because of that injured leg when Smiley took him down on that screen pass. In the first half, White was held to 33 yards and 15 carries, 8 yards and 4 carries in the second half. What a difference from a year ago. You see, they've got it all on ice there. Urema brings his tight end back off the line and sends him in motion. That's Sergeant. 
a play fake. Garima will have to bring him down the field with the pass. And that is Pugh coming out of the backfield. And J.J. Puck, number 32, on the stop for the Hawkeyes. A lot of time in this game when you got receivers like Ingram and Risen. Pugh's, excuse me, Brent. Pugh is an excellent receiver coming out of that backfield. Subbing in there for Bobby Morris, who has that shoulder problem. He's a tremendous athlete. Well, it's Pugh and Johnson to carry the load in that backfield. Yurima with time. Delivers to Ryzen. Out of bounds at the 42. A first down. Yurima to Ryzen for 13 yards. We've seen that act in the last two weeks more than once. I say you've got great speed at the flanks in Ryzen and Ingram. And they may go to a three-back guy because Sargent, the tight end, is not basically a receiver. is more of a blocker. Running into that huddle is Mike Sargent. First down at the Iowa 42. Let me welcome those of you who watched the UCLA-Arizona State game. This is Michigan State's Dave Arena, trailing by 10 points. Drawing for the far side, incomplete on a first and Greatest ten. Pass incomplete. Intended for Ingram. Arizona State beating UCLA for the first time ever, 16 to nine. Weaver. Now Arizona State very aware of this Michigan State team because they defeated them down in Tempe on opening night. Iowa leading the Spartans by ten, 5:51 to go. Iowa. Just scored three on a field goal by Rob Houghton. Yurima is 15 of 25 for 185 yards. Two touchdowns, both to Mark Ingram. On second and 10 off a of play fake. Over the middle, throwing the control ball to Q. He is hammered down. Ken Sims, the left corner, brought him down. Let's get all of you up to date who joined us. It was Yurima to Ingram, and Michigan State led 7 to nothing in the first. Then it was Bass who ran it in for the Hawkeyes. And after Michigan State fumbled the kickoff, Iowa scored on the next play, two touchdowns in nine seconds. They had the lead. But Michigan State tied it up before the half at 14. Another pass to Ingram. Paholsky tomorrow made it 21-14. And Rob Houtland's field goal brought it up by 10. On third and five, first down. Ingram inside the 10-yard line. Smiley. We'll see Ingram on the inside right here, comes down and break into the scene, and Yurima hits him right on the number. There he breaks right in, it's a zone. Smiley drops off with Ryzen, and there's Ingram with the ball. They've got both up on the same side. I said with those two receivers in there, I said earlier, you can't count the Spartans out, and there's a lot of time yet. And the ball's inside the 10. First and goal. 5.05 on the clock. Here's Johnson. He plays well. He's hammered as he tries to get outside. Ball may have come loose. But if it did, they got it back. Oh, was he popped over there on that side. Boy, did they close that seam that looked from this vantage point. There was going to be some yardage made on the play. And it just closed very quickly. It is number 37, White, that do, I mean, Davis, that does the job. George Davis. Woo. He's a senior out of Des Moines Dowling High School. He has replaced Larry Station as their top linebacker. He delivers the defensive calls to that huddle. Second and goal. George Perlis has sent the play into the arena. Ingram comes in motion. They're going to throw. Under pressure again. Left side, Ingram. Touchdown, Michigan State. What a throw under pressure, Brent. Hold on, as Mark Ingram has caught his third touchdown pass of the day against the Hawkeyes. He has caught five passes today for 102 yards and three touchdowns. What an afternoon by the wide receiver. And you pointed out the key thing. Yurima's throw under intense pressure. And going to his left, which is the hardest way to throw that ball for a right-hander. 
Extra point attempt by Cottell. And the Spartan will back to within three. 24-21 and 4-15 on that clock. You'll see a replay of this from the ground. You'll be able to see the pressure that Urema gets going to his left, which is a tough throw. There's Ingram, no 11, right in your picture, and then he runs out of the picture. What a great throw this is, and a great catch right there. Sims cannot quite get to him. Touchdown for the Spartans. So again on that clock, we've got four minutes and 15 seconds. Iowa's ahead by three, and we'll be right back. Flows, America goes. Uh, you the Mr. Bailey that fell in the car? You buying? Depends. How's it run? Great. Always on Quaker State. That's good. Quaker State means performance. You could depend on quality. I've heard that. One of a kind formula. Stable viscosity. He's flowing. Protecting. He sold me. The car? <laughs> and the oil. Quaker State. The big Q stands for quality. Always has. Always will. Looking out for you with the Toyota 4x4 Turbo, the only gas turbo, the turbo tough enough to take you where you want to go. Looking out for number one. Looking out for you has made Toyota number one in compact truck sales and number one in truck satisfaction. Who could ask for anything more? Tomorrow, Herschel Walker and the Cowboys are going to taste Denver's deadly orange crush. Double header action starts with the NFL today on CBS Sports. Arrow, show us the heat on your Rima. Well, you'll watch here. This is Ingram right there. We'll get open on Sims, but watch the pressure come in from Mott 99 and Breeze here and from the inside. Watch here. And throwing this under a lot of pressure. So Richard Pryor, 99, coming from the backside. Here's Breeze up the middle, and then Urema stepped around it. And Breeze right there. Now, here is the catch at the other end. Ingram with five catches for 102 yards. This is his third touchdown, and this ties Kirk Gibson. This is his seventh 100-yard game as a receiver. And I know that Kirk is watching because... The Tigers do not play until tonight against the Orioles. He hammered a couple of home runs last night. He's a big Michigan State fan, helped recruit some of the players here. He's probably standing up in his room saying, come on, get the ball back, boys, let's go. He's such an easy-going fellow. Isn't he? Now, Dave Arima will check with the assistant. Checks upstairs in the booth. There is one statistic that is absolutely critical to the final 415 of this game. Iowa has used up its allotments of timeouts. There are the timeouts remaining in this game. It's going to be tough going for a quarterback in his first start. Now, Iowa expects the possibility of an onside kick. They have pulled up about nine men. I'm not so sure that they'll go to the onside I, kick. I, don't, I wouldn't onside kick it. I'd kick that ball deep. I've got three timeouts. I try to put them back on the 20. Robert Smith is the lone deep man. Montgomery to kick it off. They're going to go for the onside? No, they're going to kick it, it straight down. Just into the end zone, and Smith okay. downs it for the touchback there for a moment when it hit that five-yard line. <laughs> the way it was spinning, you thought maybe the Spartans have something going. So now the pressure is on the young sophomore quarterback from St. Louis. And tomorrow the pressure will be on, well, Doug Flutie. We'll find out if he's going to go to the Green Bay Packers or where his pro future lies on the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern time. John Elway maturing into one of the best in the NFL. And we will see all that at 12.30 Eastern time. Here comes the holster. As the Hawks up. First down. Here is the pitch to Bayless. No room. That was Todd Crum, 35, who led the charge. Paholski is 18 for 28 with two touchdowns, but I'll tell you this, Hayden Fry would like to see his 19th completion to maintain possession of the ball. 
Second down and long for Paholski as the play comes in from the sideline and Bass, the fullback, is taken out. Three tight ends and Bayless. And Paholski trying to check off. He's out of timeouts, remember. The crowd trying to keep the chant up. The whistle sounds, and there's a penalty marker down. Delay. Now, Hayden Fry is going to get upset with the officiating here. He is going to expect a discretionary timeout. And he also wants his team to get that ball in play. See, Paholsky should have walked away and asked for a discretionary timeout. He never left the center, Brent. Those folks from California who are wondering about the quarterback, where is Mark Vlasic? He did not play all day because of that injured shoulder. The freshman from Claremont, California, Dan McGuire, has not played. It's been Paholsky's game. Let's give it back on the flea flicker. Paholsky to Smith. Smith is yard loose near the 50-yard line. Todd Crum. Number 35 is back there with the coverage. They charred the ball loose. He had a shot. Boy, he was open just briefly. Altabelli and Crum did a marvelous job. He pitches the ball back, and then it's given back to Paholsky like a sweep. Bayless gives it back to him. He drops back to throw it. Smith right there is open briefly. You see right there, Crum comes back to the inside. Altabelli hits him just as the ball is arrives on the scene. Great defensive play. Crum jars into him, and the happiest man has got to be Gibson. And that's who brought him here to Michigan State. It's at the 305 mark now. Costa Bala is in the game on third down. Iowa will punt the ball away. Quickly hurry back over his head. Crum. Yeah, Crum is going after it. On third down, Costa Bala punts inside the 20. Now Crum gets back near the 40-yard line before he's brought down. 2.54 to go, a 70-yard punt with a 22-yard return. Crum picks this ball up, finds a little seam and gets it back for about 19 to 20 yards and gets it at least in reasonable field position, but it was a great kick. Era 254, three timeouts left for the Spartans. Urema quickly brings the play on into the huddle, and here they come to the line of scrimmage. 24-21, Iowa with the lead. The Big Ten season opener. Time for Urema, he's got rising. Out of bounds on the near side, stops the clock near midfield. Oh, smart move by Ryzen. Looked like he wanted to go inside to pick up more yardage. Troy didn't have anything. He spun it out of bounds and stopped that clock. Plenty of time. Three wide receivers being used by George Burles. He's without Lorenzo White, who is out with a knee injury. And the drive that took him to the score was with the three wide receivers. It really has put pressure on the secondary of the Hawkeyes. They leave the ball over here on the near side so they can measure. They bring the sticks all the way across the field for the measurement. And Michigan State gets another break. Short. It is second and inches to go for that first down. Urema, 19 of 29 for 236 and three touchdowns to Ingram. And now he gets a free shot if he wants it. All three timeouts remaining. The ball is at midfield. There are no lights here in Spartan Stadium. It has been dark and overcast all day. Rained hard this morning in Lansing. Let up shortly before kickoff and has not resumed. Three wide receivers again. Boyer, Ingram, and Rising. Urema straight back, runs out of the pressure and into even more trouble. John Breeze, number 57, and big Jeff Cross, 76. Big play. I think Urema should have just unloaded the ball. So they'd have third down and a foot or so. Now they've got third down and about three or four. If they go to that long field goal, Cadell. Right now the Spartans are thinking anything but time. At 224, they want the six. Third and four. Now they must think about that first down. Urema back. He's got it to Ryzen. And Ryzen out of bounds inside the 45-yard line. 
Great pressure play. Clark stops at 208. That's 10 yard gain. Your remit of Ryzen. Watch the outside man right here, which is Ryzen. Comes right down the field. Smiley drops off. There's nobody there. He just turns away from the coverage. Steps out of bounds. Kills the clock. First down at the 43-yard line. A year ago, it was Chuck Long bringing the Hawkeyes down in the closing minutes of Iowa City against Michigan State. Today, the shoe's on the other foot. It's Arima's turn. Rolling to the right on first down. Completed into his pullback. And Hugh is out of bounds on the far side. Clock stops at the 2.02. It took six seconds to run that one off. Second and five. Pew right there, breaking to the outside. Urema sees him and takes him, delivers it right there. He takes it out of bounds to kill the clock and picks up about five or six yards. Urema with the play from the George Perlis sideline. Second and five. Three wide receivers. Ingram is slotted to the left. With Ryzen on the same side. He'll look the other way. So, first down. And again, George Davis and Kim Sims convert defensively. And it is the fullback right now for Michigan State who has picked it up. Joe Pugh. 157 left. Plenty of time and plenty of timeouts. Now here's Ryzen below with Ingram, but he turns back and throws to Boyer, I believe it is. No, it isn't. No, no, he threw to Pew over there Pugh, on that right. far side. He sent Boyer deep, cleared the corner out, curled the fullback in on the inside, made the linebacker go cover him and hit him. First and ten now for the Spartans. Back comes Uremo over here to the left side. Again, he'll throw underneath to Pew, but this one, he was under intense pressure as defensive end Mike Burke came in on top of him and forced the incompletion, second and ten. Iowa's trying to make them go the hard way. They're giving them the short stuff to the outside, but they want to protect that deep bomb and the touchdown play. Now, George Perlis is bringing Urema over to the sideline every time. They're not even using a messenger. They're giving him the play right there. Urema has to hurry back into the huddle. Let clock, remember, is running for 25 seconds. He'll get up there at about 10, but he's been doing it all drive long. This uses up a lot of time bringing your quarterback to the sideline like that. They run the draw, and Johnson punts through inside the 20 for a first down. Stop the clock. Great call. Little quick draw, quick running. Now there's 1.44 to go, and Michigan State will use its first timeout here of the second half. There's Johnson right here. They'll come out to the rollout. And he slips it back with a draw right to the inside. Watch this. Yurima's been rolling out. Gives it to Johnson. He breaks back to the inside. Oh, he does a nice job of avoiding Frost, I believe it was. And he gets into the secondary. First down. Craig Johnson of Michigan State out of Maslin, Ohio. One of many players in the Big Ten Conference. Let's take a look at the Big Ten members. Approaching the 21st century with a rich tradition of academic and athletic excellence, the Big Ten Conference today stands as the nation's most respected conference. On the playing field, the Big Ten always leads the nation in attendance, has as many bowl teams as any other conference, and will often have the national statistical leaders. Big Ten basketball success has been equally impressive with its numerous accomplishments and attendance in postseason tournaments. The conference has also been among the nation's best in other intercollegiate competition, including many women's sports, following the incorporation of women into the Big Ten in 1981. But it's more than just the success of the playing field that makes the Big Ten such a prestigious conference. From the combined enrollment of nearly one half million students will come America's leaders of tomorrow. Combining a rich heritage, enduring traditions, and three million living alumni, the Big Ten has long been regarded as a leader in intercollegiate athletics. Fans, students, and alumni can proudly proclaim that this is America's premier conference. This is the Big Ten. From Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan, along with Eric Parsegan, I'm Brent Musburger. 1.44 to go. Iowa leading Michigan State 24-21. But the Spartans on the move. They have a first down in the Colomans inside the 20-yard line at 
Aiden Fries, 18. They are without their Heisman Trophy candidate, Lorenzo White, who left because of a knee injury. But Craig Johnson, who scored last year from 25 yards out with four minutes in the game, has picked up the slack here. Yurima to put it up. For the end zone, Ryzen out of the end zone, incomplete. As intended for Keaton Ryzen Smiley incomplete. with coverage, and the Spartans went for all of it on first down. Smiley on the play for Iowa. Here's another look. As he's trying complete. to go for the, the timing was off a little bit. He was out of bounds even if he had caught the ball. You see that he's out of bounds here. Ryzen, does, could, no way he could have stayed in bounds there. Second down. The one thing George Perlis must think about now is a head coach. If you get a fourth down and 10, do you go for the tie in the Big Ten opener, or do you take one more shot at a win? Yurima is 11 of 14 for 100 yards here in the fourth quarter. Yurima rolls left. Down the middle, he's got his first down. It's England, settling inside the five-yard line. Kyle throw on the cover. Stops on a first down. Watch Yurima roll out. Johnson throws a block, and Ingram was wide open in the middle of that zone defense. He battled three of throw and Burke to the four-yard line. First and goal, 14-yard game. Beautiful job. You see Ingram is reading the secondary. He sees the seam is to the inside. He turns right there, hooks up, throw comes up, hangs on, enough to get him down but not before he gets about the three and a half. An era George Perlis has used his second timeout. There's a timeout, Perlis and the Spartans, that'll lead them with one at the 132 mark. Now there are a couple of things to keep in mind. Perlis is not letting that quarterback get them far away, Coach. Oh, that's right. I tell you, they've had trouble with running the football. His mother doesn't run down there. I mean, look at Hayden Fry. He's kind of lonely over there, man. The problem I, that I see right here, Brent, is that Michigan State has had difficulty running the football all afternoon. Are they going to try to throw it or are they going to try to run it? They just have one timeout left with one, plenty of time, 132, for the first down. Now, first and goal. Sergeant in motion. Yurima on the roll. He's going to throw it. Oh! Intercepted in the end zone by Iowa. They have turned it up the right side, Michigan State. They drive inside the five yard line, and then on the roll, number nine, Kenny Sims, comes up with the interception against George Perlis. For the Michigan State band. What a big, big play by Sims and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Yurima gets outside the contain here, starts to run, then turns and throws back across his body. Sims is right there, number nine, sitting. What a great interception. The big play in this ball game. The intended receiver was the tight end sergeant. He had gone in motion and he was open momentarily. But by the time Dave Yurima read him, Sims was into that alley, and it became very tough. So, Era, I think you pointed out the key thing. And just as that interception is made, the heavens start to open up here a little bit, and the rain starts to come down. And it's been that kind of an afternoon for the Spartans of Michigan State. We want to take a wider look here, Era, and you can show a sergeant coming in motion and make time out. problem Yurima had. There's a sergeant in motion, but as Yurima rolls out, he may throw the ball, may hesitate a little too late, but it's very difficult to throw the ball across your body. You'll see he's rolling out to the right. Now he turns and tries to throw it to the inside. Right here, right there is Sergeant. Sims right there. Now watch as he turns to throw it back. Sims comes back, and there's the interception. And on the sideline, the man who has restored the football fortunes, 
sees it wind up in the hands of Sims and checks that clock with only a minute 20 to go. It's a harsh profession. A year ago, with 27 seconds left to go, Iowa scored on the bootleg on fourth down. This time, they denied Michigan State from getting into the end zone from the three and a half yard line. And this man here has done a remarkable job. He's right about that. Kill the clock. 120 to go. Michigan State with one timeout. Second down, 15. From the 15. Paholski bringing him up in that tight formation. One twelve left. Okay, with the ball for Iowa. Okay? Yeah, they. I said one. They had taken their last one before that. After the interception, they had taken their last timeout. So they're out of timeout on both sides. What an emotional conclusion to this Big Ten opener. Fans back in Iowa City have to still be jumping around, Coach, after Sims came down with that interception. What a way to open up this season for the defending Big Ten champions. And, this, and they played without Mark Hudson, without Vlasic, their quarterback, although Polsky did a tremendous job. Sims being the only returnee in that secondary made the big play that really made the difference in the outcome of this football game. I can't remember a stadium growing any quieter this quicker than what we've experienced here this afternoon. And almost on cue, the rain started to come down. Well, we figured it was going to be a pretty close ball game. A year ago, they put 66 points on the board. This year, they put 44, 45 points on the board. You have got to applaud the coaching staff of Iowa for this win. Yep, they absolutely. were without their quarterback. They were without their fullback. They were up against a Heisman Trophy candidate who had rushed for better than 200 yards against them a year ago. They changed their pursuit on him a little bit today, and it turned out to be a very successful gambit. And the Hawkeyes will head home. And there are many fans who travel with them down there in that far corner. They are on their feet, saluting the Hawks. What a tremendous win. It was almost a sensational comeback by Michigan State, but you can see Hayden Fry, you got to be awful happy to come in on the road without a number of key players 